Hey guys, welcome to the show. Phone number 888-659-3727. You're listening to and watching The Ball Truth. Great to be here. Another Tuesday night doing The Ball Show. Uh, Jesus, I got a call just like a minute ago from a real blast from the past. I haven't spoken to this guy in over four years. And uh, apparently he says he wants to call in tonight. He uh, was my former sidekick, Dave Salazzo. Now, a lot of you guys who have been watching the program and listening to the show on, on the radio for the last 15 years, you, you guys know who, the, who this cat is. Uh, but last week, he was kind of brought back into the mix because of uh, Dr. Bowman's appearance um, on his, uh, you know, discussing his appearance on the Howard Stern show. So apparently Dave heard the show. He couldn't call in last week, but he wants to call in at some point tonight. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. But, um, you know, I guess you guys, you guys will let me know. I mean, Dave was with the show for like eight years. Guy was originally my intern. Imagine this. Think about this. He was a reader. He purchased a copy of The Ball Truth back in the day. Maybe 1999, something like that. Became a fan of the broadcast. Lived in Syracuse, New York. And when listened to the, pro to the program. And then sent me his resume. Not once. Not twice, but probably more than a half a dozen times. Until he agreed, basically, you know, I agreed to see him and speak to him. But I told him, look, I don't need anybody. I don't need any help at this point. I'm doing my show out of a radio station. I have all the help that I need. The station pays for the help. I have a producer. I have an associate producer. I have a board op. I have a phone screener. It's not like this setup here where I'm like a one-man band. I had everything. I had my fingertips, all the help that I needed. But this guy wanted to somehow be attached to the show to the point that he said he would intern for The Ball Truth free of charge, and he would come in every... The show was on Sunday nights at the time. Every Sunday from Syracuse, New York. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with New York City and with the proximity from Syracuse or the distance, Syracuse is upstate New York. It's about a five and a half hour drive from Manhattan. So this cat would drive his car to Albany, get on the train, and then take the train to Manhattan to get to the program on time at 8 p.m., before, a little bit before 8 p.m. And do the show. And just hang out. Eventually, he became part of the fabric of the broadcast. We put him on the air. People liked him. And the, the rest is history. So uh, he probably will be calling in sometime later tonight. Dave Salazzo. Probably, you know, I, I would love him to talk about his experience on the Howard Stern Show more than a decade ago when he called in concerning... Howard's concern over our callers asking about his hair, which was crazy. Let me give out the phone number. It's 888 That's 888 We have some phone lines open if you want to give us a call to discuss your questions, if you have any concerns about your hair loss. You know, I was talking to a hair transplant doctor today. Um, well, I talked to two doctors today. One guy was a board certified plastic surgeon who is now getting into hair and another guy is a well established hair transplant surgeon but the funny thing is that we were talking about the exact same thing the conversation was really based on the new um I was going to say resurgence, but it's not a resurgence. Uh, influx of automated devices in this field. 
and how it's changing the field. Now, I talked about this the other day with Joe Tillman from, from Mass and Wong. I talk about this all the time. There are members of, of, of my organization who are uh, adamant believers in the use of these devices, and I have seen some incredible results when the right staff and the right physician is using these devices, whether it be uh, the uh, artist uh, hair transplant robot, the artist system, or the neograft, or something similar. But the first conversation that I had was with the plastic surgeon who contacted me through Facebook and then wanted me to, wanted to speak to me uh, by phone and automatically wanted to be a part of what we do. He got his hands on one of these devices. He truly believes that he's done enough cases where he should be able to be a part of it, of what we do, because he is a board-certified plastic surgeon after all. And, you know, the first question I asked was, do you have any patients that I could actually see? I'm talking about final results, full-blown results. And the answer, of course, is no, because he just started. Now, yes, he did meet uh, the criteria for number of cases. But the guy has such a busy practice that he was able to bang out these cases which is 100, by the way. That's the criteria just to apply to the group. He was able to bang out these cases in a few months' time. And all I could think is, not that this is a bad guy, not that this guy probably isn't, I mean, he's, in, he's incredibly capable as a plastic surgeon. Doesn't mean that, you know, in his hands and with his staff that these results aren't going to be good. But the point is, the barrier to entry into the field of surgical hair restoration has changed to the point where anyone can get their hands on this equipment, hang up a shingle, and if you have somewhat of a busy practice, whether you're a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, and all of a sudden, your waiting room is packed, because you're promoting this cutting-edge, state-of-the-art technique. Now, the second conversation I had with a really well-known, well-heeled, I guess well-heeled means he has a lot of money, but, you know, well, well-established well hair transplant surgeon was concerning the exact same issue. This particular doctor was considering getting involved with one of these devices. But he truly believes that he can do it better the way that he's doing it right now. But a lot of guys are feeling pressured to buy these devices because their local cosmetic surgeon is getting their hands on it or because their local dermatologist is getting their hands on it and they are losing business. These are guys who have trained, who have performed hair transplants for years doing some of the best work in the country and around the world. Yet they are finding it difficult to compete with guys who have never performed surgery before. I probably shouldn't drink coffee in, in a studio that's 110 degrees already. So anyway, I found these two separate conversations very interesting because I'm getting, you know, different points of view. And I guess my question to you guys, especially to you new listeners and viewers, is if you saw, if you just based your decision on the credentials of the surgeon, meaning that if you saw a list of a guy who went to Harvard and then ended up going to Columbia Medical School, and then ended up becoming a board-certified plastic surgeon, passing his boards, doing everything he needed to do, the seven years that it takes to get to that point. And then for the last 15 years, all he's done is performed cosmetic surgery of the body and of the face. But in the last six months, decided to pick up hair, 
to grow his practice. And then you have the guy who's an emergency medical specialist. He was an emergency medical physician. And this is just an example. He's actually been performing surgery, hair transplant surgery, for over a decade. But on paper, he doesn't have the same credentials that these board-certified plastic surgeons are going to push. Who would you choose? I would bet you 10 to 1 that if you didn't really do your research, you would probably choose the guy who has the better paper on the wall. And that's understandable. You know, that, that makes sense. But what does that do to the industry? What does that do to the consumer's decision-making process? As difficult as it was just a few years ago to choose the right surgeon, it's becoming more and more difficult. And as the years progress, in the next six months even, with all the nonsense we're reading online, all the misinformation and disinformation, and now with all these, these, they may be great doctors, but they're just entering into the field. I believe there's going to be a lot of harm done to patients. And the industry as a whole is going to take a couple of steps back. And consumers, sadly, hair loss sufferers, people who aren't privy to this broadcast and to our resources, are going to be harmed. I want to know your thoughts. 888 Give us a call here at the Ball Truth. I'm going to take this call. Hey, man, you're on the air. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, man, you're on the air. Who's this? I'm going to give you one more shot. All right, you hung up. 888 I want to hear your thoughts on why... Well, we know why it's happening. There's a lot of money to be involved. A lot of money involved, a lot of money to be made. But if you weren't privy to this broadcast, how would you make your decision? That's the biggest dilemma that I think consumers across the board with cosmetic surgery have today. 888-659-3727. I'll try to take another call. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello, am I on the air? <laughs> you are on the air, my man. What's up? Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, Andrew from St. Louis calling in once again. Andrew, how are you, man? What can I do for you? Oh, I'm I'm cool. Um, I'm not as well in the chat room, just so everyone in the chat room may know. But uh, oh, cool. I just wanted to I just wanted to call to reiterate my um, very emphatic views on Avodart. Let's talk. Talk about it. Um. Well, if I had taken Avodart when I was 18 instead of Propecia, I'd probably have a thicker hairline right now. I wouldn't have as many troubles as I do, but <clears throat> I did not have the wherewithal to take. Avodart from the beginning, and I just the information was not there. So um, I just want to let everyone know that there is a drug called Dutasteride Avodart. I get it from my doctor, and uh, if you're taking Propecia and you're, the results aren't what you think they should be, you should consider Avodart because it was a godsend for me as far as scalp hair and body hair i um, i don't like body hair very much and it helped a little bit with that i'd say about helped about 10 percent with body hair and helped 95 percent with scalp hair now when i when you say it helped with body hair you mean that you have lost body hair body hair stopped growing as much once you started no. taking it um no that's not really what happened it just grows and slower but i didn't lose any body hair per se okay because I'll tell you my, my experience, and I, I want to get back to yours, but, you know, when I f first started taking Finasteride, I noticed, and I'm pretty smooth to begin with, you know, people make fun of me because I have basically have like four chest hairs, but I, I certainly noticed there was a change that the body hair seemed to diminish, uh, just didn't grow as thick and as coarse, especially on my hands and on my arms. And it's kind of maintained that, you know, uh, that type of growth for the last 20 years. So it's not uncommon for guys who are using either type 1 uh, or type 2 or type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase inhibitors to notice that they have less body hair. I'm not saying it just falls out. It just is not growing, like you said, as rapidly or as coarsely. It doesn't seem to be growing as full. It's not as robust for a lot of guys. 
Now, you, so you were on Propecia for how long before you started to do test drive? I was on Propecia from 18 to 23, so five years. All right. So in that five years, well, first of all, how, so how old are you now? I forgot. Um, I'm turning 25 next month. Okay, so you actually started using Propecia during, um, I wouldn't say it was the height of the Propecia scare, but it was really on the cusp. You know, when you, when it, when you went online to look for information on Propecia, there was a lot of uh, scary stuff on the Internet. What made you move in that direction? Well, my brother, who was bald at 23, told me uh, DHT is what causes hair loss, and I was beginning to lose my hair at 17 so at 18 he told me that and i was like okay went straight to my doctor i didn't know about the propecia scare i'd never heard about that i found out that a couple of years after having taken the drug i see it on fox news especially but um what i did was i went to my doctor and he looked at my hairline and you know he pointed out more areas than i even knew about that were thinning and he said he recommended propecia well, and I think I, I think that's interesting. And you just said a mouthful. You went. You didn't even know about some of the you know, the possible. Um, I'm not going to say overblown because there are people out there who do have significant side effects. But I think it's more rare than than you're going to read about on the internet. But you're one of these guys that just went to their doctor, got the script, didn't think about it, took the pill, and had no adverse side effects. That's really the way that it was. For many, many, many years. I started in this game a long time ago. I started using the drug in 94, 95 myself. And uh, my first book was published in 98. For a period of five or six years, you had never heard. And thousands of people contacted us over the years through the show who have read, who read the ball truth, who got themselves on Finasteride or went to their doctors based on you know other information they got, got themselves on, on Finasteride or Propecia, and they've only talked about positive results for the most part. Some guys had sexual side effects and then they would stop taking the drug and they would go away. You never, ever heard about what's being put out there online today. And frankly, um, you know, in my view, if this was something that was as prevalent as it's being claimed to be, I think the lawyers would have attached themselves to, to this drug a long time ago. You know, this is a recent phenomenon that you're seeing all these lawsuits. It's a recent phenomenon that you're seeing so many guys, uh, and, and some in the field will cons would, would consider them to be ambulance chasers. I'm not saying that they are. But really latching on to the possibility and to the insecurity and to the vulnerability of young guys who uh, believe that uh, this drug has affected them adversely. It just wasn't happening years ago. So... Why I think you're an interesting example is you're a young guy who didn't go online to read about it, who just went to their doctor, took the drug, and you had no problems. And I think that's amazing. And now you're able to talk about your experience, and you know you even switched to a stronger drug, which you know I just as a I only preface this by saying that I'm not a doctor, but as as a a, a person who's been in this field for a long time, I personally think dutasteride is a last resort. I think you need to try finasteride first, uh, see if, it, if, it, if you do well with it. If it's not working for you and you're not having any adverse side effects, then you can try to talk to your doctor about getting on dutasteride. But I'm the only reason why I said uh, dutasteride to begin with is because I didn't have any side effects with either. And basically what happened is with finasteride, I slowly and slowly lost hair. It was, I was losing ground very slowly. Now, if I had been taking Avidart from the beginning, I would have lost that ground even more slowly. You know, you're right. In your particular case, that would have been the situation. You happen to be a really good responder. Your body responds well to 5-alpha reductase type 1 and type 2 inhibition. Uh, your D total DHT uh, was lowered uh, without affecting your your sex drive or anything else at this point. And the fact that you've been on the drug for so many years, I mean, it, listen, I've been on Finasteride for over 20 years. And all I can tell you is that I've had positive results and a positive experience. But I do not know if at some point I'm going to end up with some rare form of cancer or something, God forbid, and I don't know if I'd be able to, if, if, I, if that is eventually going to be attributed to long-term use of this drug or you know, whatever. I mean, anything could happen. You know, but as of today, 
I have been using this drug for many, many years without any adverse side effects. And you're another example of a guy who's been on the drug, a young guy, and has even upped to a, a, a much stronger drug who has had good experience. So what's the point? Why am I trying to make this point? The point that I'm trying to make is there's so many guys out there your age who are suffering needlessly because they are so shit scared to get on this drug. And that's all we have. All we have is finasteride, dutasteride, and minoxidil. Everything else that's being, all the other gray market stuff that's being talked about on the message forums, including mine, really have no long-term uh, clinical proof. All, all we know is that there's a lot of anecdotal stuff going around. And guys are suffering, waiting for the next great cure when, in fact, they could help themselves like you did. So I just want to thank you for calling in again to kind of reiterate and, and retell your story. Well, I also wanted to say, um, you, uh, what about ketoconazole 2%? I use that on my scalp, and I guess everyone's scalp is different. Everyone's scalp has a different amount of oil in it and a different amount of sebum and different you know, stuff like that. But I thought it really helped with my hair. Well, you know, listen, there's, there's, there's actual clinical data showing that ketoconazole can um, uh, lower DHT levels in the scalp. So there is some thought that it could help with hair loss. But as far as sebum and as far as, you know, the initial dermatological uses for, you know, inflammatory issues that the drug, is, that, that the drug and the uh, shampoo is actually prescribed for, it's known to work. So if you are suffering with, you know, severe dandruff or, you know, uh, or um, uh, seborrhea dermatitis and, you know, other inflammatory issues, the shampoo is going to do a great job for you. With that said, there are some guys who, j who jump on the shampoo. They start using it every day where they're really not supposed to. They end up going through a telogen effluvium, you know, tremendous shed, and they flip out. So that's always something. When you start anything that actually has a drug in it, that could actually, you know, affect you systemically, then you have to be aware that you could end up kind of like losing ground uh, before you improve. But in your case, you are kind of like the perfect storm. You've done well with everything that you've tried. So, I mean, you're one of the lucky ones, man, and I'm really happy for you. I'm very lucky because I use ketoconazole 2% every single day, and it's amazing. It feels like when you put a mint in your mouth, you know, you feel refreshed. Your yeah. mouth feels refreshed. When My scalp feels refreshed after that. Well, listen, man, I'm glad you're doing so well. And I, it's, it's important that we keep a positive spin here, that we let people know. And I don't mean spin like we're trying to spin the truth. I mean like we're just trying <laughs> to keep it positive because... No spin zone. That's right. That's right. Because we want people to know that th there's real hope out there. It's not a death sentence, man, especially you young guys who are so shit scared of taking finasteride just, you know, have an open mind. There's always a possibility a possibility that, you know, you can be one of the lucky ones where it really benefits you. All right, you dude, may have evolved as a different guy if he had had his hair until 35 instead of losing it at, what, 15 or something? Joe would have been a completely different person, 100%, a, di a completely different person. Um, I think so. I, I still think he would have been fucked up in his own way, but he wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't have been about his hair. Listen, dude, I appreciate the call. All right, take it easy. You too. Okay, bye bye. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Give us a call here at the Ball Truth. If you have any questions, concerns about your hair loss, just want to vent. Uh, I certainly do want to talk about uh, what I what I discussed during my openly opening monologue. I can't speak, um, but uh, obviously I'm here to take your calls and answer your questions about anything and everything hair loss. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Hey, man, I'm calling a little bit early tonight. I'm sorry. We did on nine, but my computer's malfunctioning, and I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What's going on? All right. You know what, Joe? I will, I'm going to allow you on now, but I'm not going to keep you on for 20 minutes. I understand that. All right. So let's you leave me part up so I can hear the show. I see the, I see the message for him, but I can't. For some reason, my computer's malfunctioning. Uh, you know what you can do? You can actually press a different player. Uh, and see if you can get either Vaughn TV or Justin TV or Ustream. Uh, and if you can't get any of those, you can get the audio probably. You so, know, I see a picture frozen, and all I see, that's it, and I can't hear what's going on. Right, I well, see Amy mentioned if you go to the, the if you go to the top of the screen, you're going to see switch feeds to Daily Motion, 
Vaughn, Justin TV, Ustream, or you can just listen to the audio. If your bandwidth isn't strong enough to see my video, you could just listen to the show if you press the audio button. Oh, I well, I'm trying that, and I hear, and I do. I have Justin TV, and I don't see anything. All right, let me, let, let me get. Well, if you could leave me five. I mean, you said to hear a show. I don't Dude, know. Let's just let's just go, man. Tell me what what's up. All right, I really don't have any news to report tonight, but me and Dave, my good friend, friend, hi, 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 ball, Jerry, my good friend Dave Artista, have an online argument. Maybe you could settle it once and for all for us. Hi, my name is. My name is. My name is. Joe from Staten Island. Hi, my name is. Excuse my name me. Is, my name is. Would you like to re- can may reiterate it? My name is. My name is. My name is. Have you heard it? <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is. My name is. My name is. My name is Joe from Staten Island. All right, Joe. What's the argument? Okay, now it's working. Spencer, I switch. Is, well, it's not working now. Okay, I want you to settle two things once and for all, because me and Dave are meeting in a couple of months. He's coming to New York, and I didn't check his writing on this. First of all, I've stated to Dave many times. Do you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, no, I don't. I've, I've, I, you know, me and Dave correspond many times during the day. I've said thousands of people have killed themselves. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Yeah, you correspond many times during the day. This guy has time to correspond yeah. with you several times throughout okay. the day. Two, three, uh, three or four times a day we correspond. That's correct. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Ar- 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 Artista, if you're if you're actually listening, I want you to call in to confirm this because uh, I, I can't I can't even imagine that's true. But go ahead. Uh, three, you know, three or four times a day. Three or four times a day. This is a married man with children who has a full time job, and he's he's okay. communicating he's I'm, communicating with you three or four times a day. Yes, that's a fact. Ask him. I, listen, I I guess, I guess I have to believe you. I mean, I just, I just, it's hard for me to comprehend that. I mean, uh, w- all right. So go ahead, tell me the story. Dude. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, first thing is, we're having a debate. I've said thousands of people have committed suicide due to hair loss, and he's he's contradicting me on that. Can you please comment? And you're the you're the hair loss expert. Now, how how is he contradicting? Well, you I mean he's disagreeing with you? He's saying it's not true. I say yes. Thousands of people have killed themselves due to bad hair transplants or due to malpatent baldness. Well, we don't we like don't know that we don't know that for a fact. But I would I would say that just judging from um, being involved in this field and speaking to hair loss sufferers for over fifteen years, uh, there have probably been people who have successfully committed suicide uh, because of their depression. Uh, over their hair loss or having a bad cosmetic surgery outcome, for sure. Uh, I do know uh, for a fact that there's at least one guy out there that attempted to commit suicide and uh, basically shot himself in the head, didn't work out. And uh, he lived and ended up suing the physician who put him in that, who, who he claimed put him in that position. So that was a pretty big story about uh, maybe 10, 11 years ago. I also know of a guy who was so screwed, who believed he was so screwed up by his hair transplant physician or surgeon, he decided to go back to the hair salon where he got the recommendation and beat the shit out of this guy, with, beat the shit out of his, uh, his, um, his hairstylist with a bat, and he was put in jail. So what I can tell you is this. It's an extremely emotional issue, and depending on where you are on the uh, you know the end of the, whatever end of the spectrum you're at, there probably are plenty of people who have killed themselves. So well, that, I can't that, tell you as a fact, though. I don't have numbers. There's no there's no stats. Do you remember that mother years ago called up for a son committed suicide over hair loss? Do you remember that? I do remember that. Actually, I do. Thank you. That for you part- wish- that, that you, she wishes that you that her son knew about you that she might have saved his life. Do you remember that? How I, much I actually do remember that. Wow, yeah, I forgot all about that. But now I yeah, remember it. She was crying hysterically in the air. Only if she knew you, a good man like you would have saved her son. Dave, you're listening? Now my second point, Spencer, my second argument with Dave Artista is I've classified Andrenic you know, I, you know I'm a student of medicine. I've read many medical textbooks. They classify adrenic 
androgenic alopecia, malpatum baldness as a disease. Okay. In many, multiple textbooks. Dave Artista is constantly telling me, I mean, it's a friendly way, not to attack Dave, it's a friendly conversation. You understand that, Spencer? I do. Androgenic, uh, androgenic alopecia is classified as a disease in many medical journals. Am I correct or wrong? Well, it's a, it's a disease of the hair follicle. So basically, it is a degenerative disease of an organ. Your organ is basically um, uh, shrinking, miniaturizing, and stopping, you know, the, the continuing to grow and to function normally. So if that were to happen, and remember, each hair follicle is its own individual organ. If that were to happen yeah. to your liver or to your kidneys or to your heart, it would be categorized as a disease of that organ. So you're correct, 100% correct. Now, do most people in medicine categorize androgenetic alopecia as a disease? No, but there is a similar process, a disease process happening to those organs, just as, the, as if your, you know, your, your lungs were no longer functioning normally. That would be considered a disease process. So I have to give you uh, I have to say that you're correct as, uh, with that one as well. Well, thank you, Spencer. I'm getting um, a free dinner out of this when Dave comes to New York. <laughs> but, I will way, but, I, but I understand Dave's point because no doctor, everyone's going to say, well, you know, it's not a disease. It's not, cri it's, it's not physically crippling. It's not inhibiting you physically in some way. It's not affecting your, your um, well, it can affect your mental status, of course, but it's not physically affecting yeah, I know your mental about status. That. Right. So I understand why a lot of people will say it's not a disease and they don't, want, they don't want to hear it or they don't want it to be compared to a disease because when we think of disease, we think of you know, diseases like cancer. We think of really scary stuff. ALS, you know, cancer, multiple sclero sclerosis, you know, diseases that, you know, diabetes that, that people are really suffering with. You know, there are people right now who are young people, people younger than us, Joe, who are sitting in a hospital room right now, looking out the window, wishing they can be online, enjoying this broadcast with a little hair loss. So I think it's all relative. But Spencer, you know I'm a thorough investigator due to my law enforcement background. We can't skirt around the question. Is malpanel baldness a disease, yes or no? Well, I'm not skirting around the question, and, and I told you, uh, I gave you my answer. So to okay. me, it's not, it's, 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 Unfortunately, it's not as black and white as most people, you know, would, would want it to be. I, th I would say yes. Based on what a disease process is, the answer is yes. Based on the fact that your organs are dying. These hair follicles that are considered individual organs are dying in a sense. Now, they're really going more into a dormant stage. They don't completely die, but they're not functioning well. So if you had half your lung capacity, for instance, you would be considered a person with lung disease. If you had half of your, you know, your, your kidney capacity, you'd be a person considered to have kidney disease. So if you want a yes or no question, answer from me, I say yes. But I would tell you that most doctors will disagree. Yes, but in medical, in medical literature and medical textbooks, androgenic alopecia is definitely listed as a disease. That is a fact. Androgenetic or androgenic alopecia. Yes. Well, uh, I, I, have seen, I have seen that. Yes, and many, I can present you 100 textbooks. Right. So, okay, so you won your bet. You won your bet. What else? What else do you got for us? I hope, I hope Dave calls up. But one more quick question, and I don't have to get off. Now, you sent me first class and second class to, to Korea to cover the World Conference. I was wondering about that. Am I sending the you for, for, first or second and, class? Is there a third class? I only ride first class, my friend. Oh. Well, I'm not sending you anywhere, dude. Because let me tell you something about, I, let me tell you something about what's going to happen kidding. in Korea. I, I know you're kidding. And let me tell you about all these poor guys who are on the message forum waiting with bated breath to know what's happening in Korea. It's going to be the same shit. All, you have to understand that from discovery, from conception or discovery to conception to the ability to actually bring something to fruition as far as a treatment for this disease, Joe. 
there's a long distance of time between those, you know, those, those situations. So if a doctor today says, you know what, I found, you know, we use these stem cells and we're able to produce these hair follicles, it's not going to change these guys' lives. It's not, at least for a few years. So people who are waiting with bated breath, like their lives are going to change once I get this news, it's, I, I, it's sad. And it shouldn't be that way, Joe. You have to live for today. So I don't care, you know, who, I think it's great. People want to send somebody to the conference. First of all, they're not going to get in. But if they want to send somebody to the conference, they're going to have to get, you know, real press credentials in order to get, to get in. Or they're going to have to be sponsored by either a company or by a physician, maybe, you know, be a, a part of their staff or, you know, be, you know, to, to, to basically get in. And I don't think these cats know that. Now, Joe, well, if we really well, wanted you to go through the ball of truth, we could probably make that happen. But it was, first of all, I don't want you to, I, I, I want to have, have to deal with you in Korea by yourself. I don't want that on my head. Who knows what will happen to you? I'm joking, but yeah, who knows? You know? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but one final point. Dr. Dr. Um, Washenik has been disinvited this year. That's a very interesting point I should bring up. Say that again. Dr. Kenny Wyshenik has not been invited this year. Very interesting. Well, how do you know he hasn't been invited? As opposed I to him just not going. Well, he was not invited. He usually he goes. He usually is every year. So you're 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 saying you're stating as a fact on this program that Dr. Wyshenik was not invited to this World Hair Conference. I don't believe that. That's a fact. That's a fact. Spencer, have your staff have your have your staff look into it? How do you no, know he like wasn't that. invited? Is it there's a difference between not being invited and choosing not to go and speak? He was not invited, according to according to what I've seen online. Yeah, let me tell you, from what you've seen online, it's bullshit. Well, can you do me a favor and look into it, Spencer, and talk about it next week? I'm telling you, he has not been invited. Now, first I'm of all, do you think that do you think Kenneth Shank's going to come in, call the show, and say, you know what, they didn't invite me? Well, I'm just saying it, uh, saying saying that as a fact. All right, don't maybe, say it as a fact. Don't believe the shit that you read online, dude. Please, all right. please. It's not a fact. I think uh, it's a good possibility he hasn't been invited. Nothing is factual in our sick, hellless world. Am I correct about that? Uh, very well said, Joe. I'm going to put you on hold because you said that you, okay, can, you can't you hear the show. Okay, have call up. Tell them to call up. Call in. I can't. I, I can't. I they people call when they want to call. And I press the level quickly, Spencer. I just hope you're doing better, what you're going to be dealing with. Okay, I love you, man. Thank God you, pleasure. man. I appreciate that. Thank you for the time, Spencer. All right, you got it. Jesus. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hi, Spencer. It's Artista. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what do you got I going know. on here with Joe? I mean, I got I to gotta deal with you guys betting, you know, about... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's well, craziness. Me first, well, no, first of all, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you a, 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 a point blank question. You actually communicate sure. with Joe from Staten Island three times a day? Yeah, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah, it's all within a half an hour's time. You have to keep in mind I work in the evening. So in the morning time is when he writes to me. And it's usually, you know, I'll respond and then he'll, he'll write back right away. So I, I answer. So it's like maybe three times a, a, a day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the way that it, ma it makes it like you guys are having these long conversations and that you're, you know. It's always within like a half an hour's time and that's about it. So it's just kind of like, you know, you email him or he email emails you, you email him back and then he responds yeah. and then you respond back and that's your level of communication. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Okay. All right. That, sound, that seems a lot more normal. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead with your thought. Well, anyways, um, it when talking about hair loss as being a disease, it's the way that he defines it as a disease, you know, um, if you understand what I'm saying. I mean, it's like when he, he says hair loss is worse than cancer. Yeah, well, that's that ridiculous. And, that, and, and, I, and that's the point that I was trying to make is that it's, it's to, to make that comparison is just, look, I, I've said many times, and I coined the phrase that hair loss is a, a cancer of the spirit. Okay, but it's yes. the only the only reason I compared it or tried to make, you know, make that point is just to emphasize 
how difficult it is for so many people who are dealing with hair loss and that it does yeah. destroy people's spirits if they allow it to. If and, they allow it to. Right. And it has that capacity to do that. And it does it to many, many people. So, yes, I believe it's a cancer of the spirit, but to compare it to actual cancer, you know, I think that is a, I mean, not only is that disrespectful to these, you know, to the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people who are dealing with cancer every year, I mean, it, it definitely shows the, you know, Joe's, I hate to say, but limited capacity to kind of uh, live in the real world. Right, right. Yeah, to live for today, as you were just telling him uh, earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, people want me to comment on, on Negan being in the chat. He's not in the chat. So if you guys are dumb no. enough to think that he's actually in the chat, then <laughs> that's why you belong in the chat. <laughs> oh, another thing. And uh, Joe had, had described to me uh, had, during one of those emails that... Uh, there were tons, of, well, I, I don't know that he said tons, but he talked that there was multitudes of suicides because of hair loss, and I disagree with that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't say that there are multitudes. I can guarantee you that there are people out there that have committed suicide because of their hair loss, because they couldn't deal. You know, that was like the last straw. For them, it was their tipping point. They were probably mm -hmm. a little mentally unstable to begin with. Uh, and this was their tipping point. They couldn't deal with it. There were guys, and you know, a couple in particular uh, that I've spoken to over the years who were really suicidal. Now, I didn't keep close tabs on these people after I, you know, communicate with them and try to advise them. I don't know if they committed suicide. I knew one guy that was actually going through the necessary um, therapy in order to have his balls cut off. Because, because of his hair loss. And I talked him out of it. He was going to be castrated. Basically, you know, was willing to become a woman. Now, I'm not talking about Joe. This is a, this, this is a person. This, I remember this guy. He was like 41 years old. This is, and I was young then. I was like 32 when I was talking to this guy. I actually took the time to speak to him by phone after the broadcast on several, of, several occasions. And, um, I mean, that's how serious he was about it, and that's how it was affecting his life. So wow. you have people on that end of the spectrum. You have the Joe from Staten Island, and there's many of them. You just happen to be a normal person, so it's hard, it's hard for you to understand that because, you, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're living your life. You have your family. Hair loss sucks, yeah. but you're able, you're able to deal. There are people out there who can't. So are there thousands of people who actually committed suicide because of their hair loss? I don't know. But I'm pretty convinced that there are some people out there who've killed themselves because of their hair loss. Yeah, but that, that percentage would have to be really low. Uh, I would say know, it's very, very low, be, yeah. Yeah, the mental illness uh, would be the biggest issue. Well, yeah, you have to be mentally ill mm -hmm. in order to, 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 to go that far. But, you know, what, what's, what's mental illness? Is it, you know, can it just be associated, I mean, severe depression? That's why most people kill themselves. So if yeah. their hair loss, if they couldn't deal with the way that they look and they couldn't look, they can't look at themselves in the mirror and they're prone to depression to begin with, and then the hair loss is their tipping point, I can certainly see it because there was, you know, there was a time I was in a very dark place as a young man. And I talk about that freely. And, but I figured it out. But when I was going through the initial throes of hair loss, I was extremely depressed. I didn't know which way to turn. And unfortunately, I was turning to the doctors and to the snake oil salesmen and to all the people that wanted to rip me off or disfigure me. And I was so fortunate to have the wherewithal to step back from it and do my thing the way that I needed to do it in order to help myself. But during that time, I began to self-medicate. I was at the bars all the time. I had to prove that I was still desirable. So I was banging around like, I mean, it was insane. And that's not healthy. You know, everyone, all the young guys out there are going, oh, good for you, Spence. No, that's a really fucked up thing to do. I'm so lucky that I didn't, you know, end up with, uh, with, with something that was going to kill me, you know, especially back in the day. You know, so I, I feel that, 
there, there's no doubt, I feel, I, I think that there's no doubt that there are people who deal with this in different ways and some people just, it's so difficult for them that this is like the nail in their coffin and they decide to just, you know, off themselves. And I do remember the call that Joe was talking about now that he brought it up. A mother did call the program years and years ago just wishing that her son would have heard my show and had someone to speak to because she believed that he killed himself because of his hair loss because this person was obsessed with his hair. That's pretty sad. Yeah. Yeah. Shit happens, man. You know, my whole thing is, and that's why I do the show, and that's why I still do it, even though sometimes I'm bored to tears. I'm just kidding, guys. But sometimes, you know, I just, I think to myself, how long am I going to do this? But then I'll get an email from somebody who they claim I saved their life or they say that, you know, the show has kind of helped them turn a corner and to, to realize that, you know, there is life after hair loss. That's why I continue to do it. I can't help Joe. Joe is someone you just can't help. Right. And uh, your attempt to make the show a lot more positive is working. I think you're doing a great job. Well, I appreciate it, man. Dave, um, you know, keep calling. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm glad you're doing well on Finasteride. Uh, you're keeping a positive outlook on the forum. You're helping a lot of young guys. So keep, you know, keep well, it up. You. I appreciate it. All right? All right. We'll All right man. Thanks for the call. Take care, Spence. All right. Take it easy. 888 I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I will be taking your calls. Uh, and, you know, listen, we're here to talk about anything and everything hair loss. But I am curious. I really am curious. Please. I know the lines are lit. I'm hoping that I, I pick up one call and speak to someone who's interested in what's happening in the industry as far as, you know, the mess that's, I think, in, in my view, just the way that the hair transplant industry is, is devolving. We, you know, work so hard to get it to a certain point, and now it's just, it's falling apart. Now, what are you guys going to do? What do you think that the guys who can't don't find this program right away or the American Hair Loss Association or the Ball Truth or the IHRS or Ball Truth Talk? Where do you think they're going to go? They're going to go to the guys with the flashy ads. They're going to go to the guys who are maybe potentially, you know, board certified plastic surgeons who have never done sur hair, hair surgery, but now they got one of these devices. How do we help these guys? I mean, I, th I've, I don't know what else to do. Give me a call. Let me know. 888-659-3727. We'll be right back. The man who's helping to make hair loss history. They wish to cure us. But I say we are the cure. It's Spencer David Cobrin. Hey, guys. Welcome back. 888-659-3727 is a toll-free number. Give us a call here at The Ball Truth. If you have any questions or concerns about your hair loss, this is the place. This is your safe place. Doing this show for over 15 years. Can you believe it? I can't believe it, actually. I cannot believe it. I should have been off the air 10 years ago. It's ridiculous. But we were talking about a lot of things the first hour. And, and one, listen, one concern that I have is uh, the, the, the way I believe the hair transplant industry is devolving again. It was getting much better. It's becoming a much better place. And there's still, I mean, listen, if you, if you find this broadcast and you find our resources, then you're in luck. But there are thousands of people who aren't going to find us right away because they're going to go with the ads. They're going to see the bullshit news pieces at their, in their, you know, on, on their local news. They're going to read some ridiculous story on beard hair transplants and think that they're, the guy that just bought this new machine is going to be able to give them this beard that they've always wanted, this designer beard. It's a fucking mess out there. You know, and last week, the reason we had Dr. Bauman on the show and the reason Dr. Bauman was invited to the Howard Stern show 
was because all of this hoopla over beard hair transplants. Some reporter decided to write about it. And then it went from newspaper, from media outlet to media outlet, from newspaper to newspaper, to online outlet to online outlet. And then everybody's being called about beard hair transplants. I was called. I was asked for my opinion. Now, sometimes the issue is I give the truth. I, you know, I, I state the truth. And the reporter maybe, want to, maybe wants to run with the truth, but their editor doesn't want to run with the truth. They want to keep the sexy story. So a lot of times the truth is just edited out. We'll see. There was a, a reporter from a major newspaper, New York newspaper, contacted me about this like a week and a half ago. I haven't seen anything run referring to anything that I said about the reality of beard hair transplants. Anyway, that's how we got into the subject of Howard Stern again last week. Now, I don't know who this is. This may be Dave Salazzo. Um, let's see. Hey, man, you're on the air. Who's this? Hi, Spencer. It's me. <laughs> hey, Dave. How are you, man? It's great to hear your voice, dude. I know. It's been ages. First of all, it's insane that you somehow you disappeared off the face of the earth. The, I, the only reason I know you're alive is because of Facebook. Yeah, yeah Facebook. I mean, I, I kind of hate Facebook. I, I got into it five years ago, and I, I liked it. I'm sure you probably feel similar. But it is, it is good to keep in touch. You know, I mean, to, you, you can keep in touch with friends on Facebook and see what people are up to. And I've actually been doing pretty well. All right. Well, tell me what, what's going on. What's going on with your life? And then we'll talk about your, uh, your experience on the Howard Stern Show 10 years ago. Yeah, sure. So just life-wise, I've been, you know, I've been doing a little bit better. I think when we spoke last, you know, like the situation for the years when I was doing the show, I was frustrated with, you know, I'm a musician and I was playing gigs, and I still am. I was kind of frustrated with the gig scene and things weren't, you know, evolving the way I wanted them to. But the last four years, it's actually been great. You know, I've, I played with a, like, after, not long after, you know, we, well, not, not long after, you know, like four years ago when, after I had left. It, it's been four years since I've talked to you on the phone, really. It's, it's like dude, as, soon, as soon as you left, as soon as you left the show, it's like you just, you're like, you know, fuck Cobra. No, we kept it, no, we sent like, you know, Facebook messages and stuff. Yeah, maybe every once in a while you would like a Facebook you know, thing that I put up or something, a picture. And that was it. Well, you know, okay, so getting back to what I was talking about, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, but, you know, you, once you, get, I mean, you know this, too. You have, you have a birthday coming up in a couple months, right? Yes. Once you get older, it's like, you know, four years, four days, like four, four months. I mean, it really, it's like really all the same it's in a, a way. Well, now you're in your 40s, right? Yeah, I turned 40. Yeah, I'm 41. Jesus Christ! So it's, it's crazy, but like four years ago, I started playing with uh, this jam, this original jam band in Syracuse, and it was great. You know, we were doing. I'm still playing with those guys, and we're doing bigger shows. You know, we're doing like outdoor concerts. We're opening up for people. Um, we're playing. We, we're still. We're playing in clubs too. But it's it's great. You know, I had gone from just for years just playing like in little you know like you'd, on a jazz gig you'd play like in a dark corner in some restaurant no one would even care right. so I went from doing that to playing you know in clubs where there are girls dancing and it was it's actually been really great you know well, so listen I, I, I'm, I'm glad that your life is evolving I'm glad that your your career has gotten to the point where it has I mean you're a great musician yeah, and I know how frustrated right. you were and I think you were pretty frustrated with the show over the years and I get that no, I, I wasn't frustrated with it. I just, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I was, you know, honestly, for the last four years, I haven't thought about my, I've thought about my hair almost not at all, really. I mean, I think I'm, you know, it's, it doesn't seem to be getting worse. I'm taking, I'm still on Propecia, you know, the one milligram, but I'm, I don't even freak out about taking it. Like, you know, when, when my prescription runs out, I'll let a week go by without renewing it. You know, I'll take it every other day. I'll take it every three days or whatever, and everything's fine. You know, we, ne we never spoke about this, but what do you think about, because we weren't, when you were doing the show, this was not a topic of conversation. What do you think about all the insanity that's, that's out there about Propecia now? All these lawsuits, you know, all these guys who are like, I mean, they, they are so scared, they won't even touch the pill. 
know, honestly, I'm not even aware of much of that at all. I mean, I know that there was always a lot of fear about it, and, you know, people claim to have sexual side effects and stuff, and I'm sure some of that probably, you know, really happened, but I think a lot of it is, you know, in my opinion, I think a lot of it might be psychological, really. Well, well okay, you know? so you've been out of the scene for a long time, but, you know, what's happened yeah. is there has been these, these group of guys that uh, who were claiming that they had these permanent, long-term adverse side effects even after they stopped using the drug. Now, I'm not saying that... That's... Well, I'm not saying yeah, that there's, there's not a subset of guys that this may happen to, but because of this and because of uh, you know, the tremendous amount of effort they're putting into getting the word out there about this possibility. I mean, lawyers are jumping on on the scene and all these guys, you know, now there's all these class action lawsuits and just, you know, people who really believe they've been, you know, uh, permanently damaged by this drug. And I'm not saying some guys, you know, may, there may be some anomalies out there for sure. Yeah. But, but but if there are, I think it's very rare. You know, I mean, I you know, in my opinion, I would think. And you're talking about people who claim to have had side effects after the drug is out of their system. Well, there's something now. I mean, there's something now called post finasteride syndrome. Okay. And basically, there, you know, the claims are, and there's this nonprofit foundation, all this stuff happening that you know, people who are even some people go through like a hormonal crash after they stop using the drug and they okay. believe that they're permanently impotent and some people uh you know have this, experienced this initially when they're on the drug and then you know it continues after they take the drug as well i'm not saying it doesn't occur but it's amazing how much traction they've gotten and i have to tell you that well i think listen if it happened to me i'd be doing the same fucking shit I'd be doing the same yeah. exact thing. I'd be out there banging that drum. So I, I have to, I give them respect for that. I certainly understand it. But I also think that there are guys like you, you know, if you heard, if you would have read about this before you started using the drug, you never would be in the position that you're in today. Because you probably yeah, would I, never have I, taken I, it. I probably would be. And, and it's interesting, you know, I mean, it's almost like the fluoride in the water kind of a thing. You know, I mean, I think, you know, I think that, you know, fluoride is beneficial, I and mean, there are people that'll talk about how it's, it's you know, it's causing like decreased IQ and, and like all this stuff, and you know, all these problems. I, I think we just live in a time. I'm not again. I'm not you know, I'm not saying that there aren't some people who are affected by the drug, but I, I think that I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't. Just based on my experience and the people that I knew who who had taken it, I, I just I, I don't know. I think it was it's very rare that uh, you know that people could have problems like that. And I think some of it was probably like psychosomatic. Is that the word or psychological? That is, that is the, uh, that's the term for sure. And that's the word. You know, but I, I mean, I, who, who am I? I haven't studied it. I'm not like, you know, I, I'm not a scientist. I'm just saying based on what, you know, just my experience with it and the experience of the people I know. So, but it is, I, 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 exactly. And it's been, I started the drug in May. Remember this, like, I mean, this is like a really important life event for me. It was May of 2001. You know, I was in, like, the worst depression of my life, and I, I started it at the drug then, and, you know, well, let's, I let's, think I've... Let's talk about that. Let's talk about, I mean, when you have initially contacted me. I mean, I, I, I tell the story once in a while. I told the story briefly um, the first hour that you may be calling in tonight. But you were a guy that just picked up my book. Yeah, I, I picked up the book, and, and you know, I was... I knew this. I was 28 at the time, and I knew how, I knew I had been. My hair had been changing the past few years. I was at that point when I when I was 28. It was like the spring of 2001, where I knew that it was getting to the point where I couldn't really disguise it anymore. So I knew I had to do something, and I was freaking out. And you know, I I was doing research on the internet, and then I found your. I stumbled onto you know you and your book, and it was you know it was, you were the guy that was like giving you like the straight information like the real story about and stuff and i you know i found out that there were people treating their hair loss and actually you know stopping it and, and i just i couldn't to me that was like i couldn't believe it i knew propecia existed right but i just you know i mean it's like if you don't know someone who's on it or you know if you don't know someone who you know who's benefited from it you just you know you don't know you don't know how effective it is so the idea that i could actually stop my hair loss and it was like amazing but at that time i was so depressed it was just but I think back on that time, and it was, it was those were dark was, days. And I was talking about my dark days. I mean, I was, I oh was, my God, yeah. I was in, I was really depressed, man. And when I was twenty two, you know, twenty one, twenty two years old, I was in bad shape. Yeah, you know, and you know, I, and I think that's why I kind of, 
you know, you would call, you would send me your resume, and I'm like, you know, this guy's really persistent. You know, you would talk about your depression, and, and, and that's kind of why I let you into into my world. Because yeah, I'm like, well, this guy's crazy. like me. It was great. Like it saved my life at the time. Really, I mean, I don't know what I would have done. I mean, I mean, it really is not an exaggeration to say it was like you know, it, you know, it was like saved my life in a lot of ways. I think you really did, and I, everything changed once I started the drug. And how come you don't call me anymore, did. dude? I called you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I dialed in. I didn't even have it programmed on my phone. I just knew. I just had it from memory. I still, I won't say it on the air, obviously, but I, I, I don't know if your house numbers change, but I still have that one in my head, too. Yeah, I, I, would, I appreciate you not saying it on the air. Yeah. <laughs> How's Hunter doing, by the way? He's okay, that, and I appreciate you not um, naming my pets on the air, either. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it was like life-saving at the time. I mean, that was just, it was a dark time. It's funny, though, when I think back on that time in 2001, it's almost like I kind of look back on it with, like, some fondness in a way, because... As dark as it was, like those times when you go through that, the, those kind of struggles, and almost, like I look back on it, and I, it's almost like I felt, like you, you feel like, it's like I felt more alive or something. Like it, it sounds crazy, but in those periods where things were really tough, like it, it just creates this like really vivid kind of impression of that time in your life. And it, you know, I'm not saying I would ever want to go back to that. Well, let me tell you, I, 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 I like, I think, and I say this all the time. You know, I, I live life plus. The life that I live now, with all the insanity that I've dealt with over the years, and you've known my life um, to a certain yeah. degree, the loss of my brother, uh, recently the loss of my father, but I mean, and all the insanity that I dealt with in business, and uh, I, I still was able to handle it because I felt that I somehow came to terms with what I, what I was dealing with. Um, luckily, you know, slowed the progression of my hair loss, so I was able to kind of get, you know, get to the point where I was able to intellectualize things as opposed to just dealing with, you know, con you know, the, the, the progression of my hair loss and, you know, being in that dark place. And at this point, not that I want it to happen, but God forbid if medication stopped working, at least I know what I would do. At least I know that I could still live my life and figure it, figure it out, you know, get a piece or get a hair transplant or whatever. Yeah. And, and be comfortable with that. But these young yeah. guys, when you're at that age, you don't get it, man. You know, you can't. It's, it's, just, it's happening to you. It's all of a sudden, this is, you're slapped in the face with this shit. And you you got to deal with it. It was unbelievable. I mean, I remember, I, you know, I was like waking up in the middle of the night and just like, I mean, it sounds crazy, but I was. I was just freaking out about it. I mean, I, I, it was just. I mean, I, I mean, it was just, it was really... Dude, when I met you, oh, when you first I, came in, the first night when I said, okay, come down, if you want to be an intern, you can come to the studio. First of all, you were a mess. You were a... Oh, a, yeah. Uh, you were a sweaty, uncomfortable, nervous wreck. Yeah. And what was that about? Was it was, was some of that based on your hair loss, or was just that was just your natural, you I know, social was, anxiety I, situation? I do. I, yeah, I did suffer. I mean, I think I'm a little bit better now, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I did have had anxiety for years, really. I mean, and, and, and it's worse in some situations. And for me, that was, you know, it's like a really big thing to come to meet you and, and you know what I mean? It, it was just... So like in, my, in your mind, in your mind, I was like a famous person. I was this like yeah, bizarre, right. like... like right. Celebrity. Absolutely, yeah. You were on the radio, and, and the building was kind of intimidating. It was this, you know, that this big building in New York, and you know, I mean, I wasn't. I had been to New York many times, but you know, I, I took a train down. Or I think I, the first time I think I would have driven. It was yeah. It was like you know, it was nervous, and you meet the whole crew, and the, you know, the whole radio show crew, and it's like you know, you're the you're like the oddball, you know. It's like it's, it was weird, you know. You know, it's interesting now. I run the entire goddamn thing out of my house now. And it is, oh, it is agree, like, yeah. you, I think about the morons that used to work for me. I'm not, that's not including you. But just, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, you know, and what, what I had to pay them in order to run this broadcast. It's, yeah. an, it's insane. And now I can oh, do it. Yeah. I do it all myself. And you know what? I'm like a one man band. It's not easy. Let me tell you. I mean, I, I obviously no. I, can, I, I can do it. But when you first start doing it, it's like you realize, Jesus, you got to run the sound. You got to run the video. You got to run the board. You got to pick up your phone. Hey, like the Art Bell of Hair Loss Radio. That's right. Art Bell of Hair Loss Radio. The fact that there's Hair Loss Radio still on the air is insane. All right. So let, let's. By the way, you said I, 
you said I think incorrectly. You said you'd been doing this for 15 years. You know, when when you were doing your intro or whatever. I think it's 16 years. It's like 1998. Oh my God! 16 years. It's 16 year. years. Yeah, 16 I mean, years. But I mean, like, and can you believe years? how good I look? I'm just kidding. Huh? So uh, <laughs> you're not even watching the show. You're just calling in. Yeah, I'm just like just calling in. Yeah. Now, do you have a computer? I'm, and I'm, I I don't know if I should even ask this. And then when we get to the Howard Stern show, where do you live now? I take a guess. You're still living at home. You would be correct, yes. Okay. But I mean... You know, well, listen, I mean, your parents are going to die soon, so it's going to be your house. <laughs> well, the neighborhood's got to go south, though. I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean, they got to be like in their 90s at this point. <laughs> well, yeah, I think Father Mick, I think he's about 97. and no, Actually, he's, <laughs> there, he's, he's 71 now. And thank God they're doing well. But um, That's great. But no, I mean, I was uh, you know, actually... The past four years, I had like my own. I, I moved to Ithaca, New York, which is like a little south of Syracuse. I lived. I spent a summer there, and my whole philosophy is, you know, I, I you know, I can get a place tomorrow, and I, I'm going to do that eventually. But you know, being a musician, if there's an opportunity, like a, a couple of years ago, there was an opportunity. I didn't. Well, I wound up not getting it because they went with someone who played the piano dude, and sang. Dude, screw it. You're you're 41 years old. You're still living at home. Just living at home until until it's your house. Yeah. You've gone past a certain point. Eventually, it's going to be your place. It was funny. I mean, I was more bummed out about, like, you know, talking to people about, like, meeting chicks or and something, you know, or something, and just saying you live at home. Like, it was kind of embarrassing. I was more concerned about that, like, 10 years ago. Now, at this point, it's just like... Dude, now, years. at this point, you're 41 years old, and the fact that you, you know, you, you have, like, like some real gigs, just say that you're supporting your family. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Look, yeah, look, look. My, my parents are getting older. I'm not married. I'm supporting them. It's the way it is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's how you got to play it. All right, let's talk about Howard Stern. Last week, yeah. Alan Bauman called in, uh, and you know Bauman from the show for a long time, Doctor B, and he was actually invited to to be on Stern to discuss beard hair transplants. And what Stern wasn't prepared for was that Doctor B was going to ask him direct questions about his own hair. And it was pretty. Oh, wow. it, it was pretty amazing, uh, you know, just how Howard responded. He wasn't prepared for it. I can see if I can find the clip in a second. I don't have it. I don't have. Yeah, it I'd love to hear that. Yeah, but it was it was wild, man. So, all right. So you were on the show. What was it? it it's over. How many years ago now? Ten, twelve years ago. This happened. The the whole Stern thing happened in two thousand two. 2002, Jesus Christ, that's 12 yeah, years. Yeah, we had met, like, the girl, that girl Amy had called in, right? And people were calling in about it, but she had called in and said that she worked in the same building with Stern, and she would ride the elevator with him in the morning, and he was like, she, according to her, she said he was, like, clearly losing his hair. Right. So, and then we weren't trying to, like, talk shit or anything. We, like, people were asking about it, right? People were, you know, calling in and talking about it, and I called Stern, remember that, right? I, yeah. I I had called the Stern show and, 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 you know, brought it up and, you know, explained who I was. And they kind of, they were really pretty rough on me. They kind of, like, tore me apart. But by the end of that, you know, I said, you know, I, I kind of was like, you know, you know, he was so defensive and so rude and insulting. I was like, you know, I think you, if I were a betting man, I think that you are losing your hair. And he's like, all right, put up 50 grand, you know. And then well, I went back to you and we were going to do it. We you, tried to do you it. You went back to me, you asked me, I said, take the bet, call him back. That's it, 50 yeah, grand, right. we'll do it. And, and and to make this clear, I even said, tell him that the winnings will go to charity. So you, the yeah. charity to his, of his choice. And, I mean, what a great deal. What a great way to get mo give money to charity, especially if you're so confident that you're, you know, you're going to win. Yeah, and, and you said you would bring in, like, what, with two doctors? Like, a, you know, he could bring in two doctors or right. he could bring in two doctors. That's right. And it would be all very fair and independent or whatever. So, you know, I called back. To make a long story short, I called back to to tell him we were going to take him up on the on the bet. And I, I just, I could never get, well, but I got through, you know, I left messages for Gary. I had called the call screeners, you know, a million. I mean, I literally called almost daily, I think, for like a month, maybe three weeks or a month. Yeah, and, and I tried again after that, and they just totally blew me off. They, they, Gary never got back to me. Yeah. You know, they just had no interest for whatever reason. They had no interest in, in taking me up. Well, on I, th I, I find that fascinating, and it's, it's you know yeah. I I just basically uh, last week I said that you called back and you 
said, we will accept the bet. But the truth is, you did call. You were calling every day. You got yeah, through. I mean, I, you left I messages. Really was. You left mer- yeah. messages on Gary's voicemail. Yeah. And you're like, hey, Gary, Mr. Coburn <laughs> is willing to take the bet. And you would yeah. think that if they were actually serious about I mean, they're the ones who, who kind of extended the gauntlet. They put down the gauntlet. Yeah. They said, we'll bet you. Go back to Mr. Coburn and see if he has any money to accept the bet. And I was like, you know, at the time, I'm like, you know, it's great publicity. Why not? I'll accept the bet. Let's do it. I didn't know if Howard had, you know, if that was his hair or not. I didn't care. It was just great for the show, and it was great for what we were doing. So to me, putting up $50,000 and giving it to charity was well worth it. You couldn't buy that type of publicity at the time. But Yeah, I know. I mean, and he, they, they just, you know, I was so diligent. I would really get up every day and call, and it, just, it was just like silent night. It never got back to me, and it just, you know, at that point, what could you do, really? I mean... Well, what I think it's it's interesting because Chauncey Hayden called the show last week, and you know, and his opinion is, I mean, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty convinced that what's going on with Howard's hair is, it's you know, uh, that it's not his. I have no idea. I have no clue. But I find it interesting that that Chauncey was so convinced. Yeah, I mean, he can have just like a partial system in the back or something, right? I mean, he is sixty years old. I mean, who knows what you he's know, got? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, who? Maybe it's even more than that. Maybe it's his own hair. I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't give a shit. And that's what that was. What, that, that's what was funny yeah. about the whole situation. I could care less. This was brought. This was kind of thrown in our lap. This yeah. person called in, or this person came into the studio and said that she worked in Howard's building and would see him in the elevator and was convinced that Howard was wearing a hairpiece. How is that not, you know? the type of conversation that we're supposed to have on the bald show. You know, and people just sort of were fascinated by that, you know, and people wouldn't, people wanted to talk about it and people were calling in constantly and, and, and talking about it. It wasn't like we were trying to, you know, you know, it wasn't like we were talking about it because we didn't have anything else to talk about. People were bringing it up. Dude, first of all, yeah, the, the, one, the one thing that I made clear, you know, when I first started doing the show, the last thing I want to do is out celebrities. Yeah, and of, course, of course, we would never do that. I mean... First of all, it's 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 like the it's it's kind of like the, you're talking about the low hanging fruit. That's e- that's an easy way to get press. Yeah. And I chose not to go that route early on. There are plenty of celebrities out there that I know for a fact that people would flip out. Yeah. If I told them who was wearing hair, who had hair transplants, who's contacted me over the years for help, they would. I mean, women would be crying in the streets if they knew some of the guys in Hollywood who were wearing hair pieces. And I'm not talking about John yeah. Travolta because that's pretty much outed. <laughs> so yeah, I mean there are a lot of them. I, I know it, it's kind of smarmy. That is that the word? Is that a word? Am I saying that right? Yeah, that's a word. Smarmy yeah. or yeah. yeah, to talk about that. And that's what I think. That's what Stern thought we were doing because I called in, and things you know started out okay, and then it just sort of degenerated. Well, I want to tell you. you know, I was listening at uh, listening to it the other day with Common Law, who I'm not, don't mention don't mention my wife's name by the way on the air. I was listening to it with Common Law, and, you know, the truth is, I, I thought you handled it well. There are some guys out there that, uh, like Andrew Zarian, for instance, who I work with now, who thinks that he could have handled it better. That's bullshit, Andrew, if you're listening. I think, Dave, you know, you, you actually brought out the fact that, you know, you, you, know, you, would, you would say, like, when, when Howard would say, you know, you know, why are you talking about me or something like that? You would, you would always bring up, put out the word hair loss. Like, well, we're not talking about you. You know, people are concerned about your hair loss. And that was funny. You know, it was, yeah, it, it was really perfect. I know. People are fascinated. As you know, people are fascinated by celebrities. You know, every aspect of, of, of the whole celebrity thing. And people, this was something that people just kept bringing up. That's right. Yeah. It, it was, that was... I remember that was crazy. That was, it was a funny day. But by the end, I was just pissed. I mean, I, I just, they were just so, like, insulting. I was pissed. I was just like, all right, you know, let's, our betting person, I'd say that you were, just from the way he was acting. Yeah, but that's so the, the point. That's, 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 listen, that's how he made his living. That's how he made his name for being, you know, being as insulting as he is. But, you know, yeah, this, I, this is what insulted me the most. What insulted me the most is that he basically said to you that, A, we were an infomercial, and B, that, 
you know, we were selling, you know, how, what are you guys doing? Selling these Jive products and, you know, like ripping people off. And that yeah. drove me crazy because, frankly, he was the guy that was promoting some of the worst of the worst. Oh, yeah, he would take yeah, anybody's sure. money because, listen, he worked for, he. This, this is his job. His job is to sell advertising. So whoever decided to advertise on the Howard Stern show that was in the hair loss world, he would promote. And I remember one commercial, I'm not going to even mention the the, the, the the name of the company, when he said that the hair looks so good, he was, he'd was he be willing to rip out his own hair <laughs> to have this, this process done. And when Howard Stern says that, especially back in the day, people listened. And there were so many people, in my view, or at least people, uh, I can tell you people for sure, Cha Chauncey Hayden was harmed by it, Steve Grillo was harmed by it, and other guys who worked for the Stern Show or who were involved with the Stern Show claimed that they were harmed by at least one of the sponsors that Howard Stern endorsed. So that's what pissed yeah, me sure. off back in the day. Yeah, and I'm sure that inspired so many people to have you know, to go to those questionable places, and I'm sure they didn't have great outcomes, you know, so Dude, I find it ironic that... It is ironic. Be... Look, you know who advertised on the Stern Show. And oh, it, yeah. Yeah, uh, I was one saying, of the worst of the worst. The lowest common denominator of this industry advertised on the Stern around, Show. Is still around, by the way? He's, he's not still around. Oh, that guy's still around. Also, I'm talking about the chain clinics, some of the, you know, lowest common denominators in the wig business. They yeah. all advertised with the Stern Show, locally and nationally. And Stern would get on on the mic and say, these people are doing a great job. Yeah, oh, it's such a disaster. Oh, so what, what a joke. Let, let, let's see who this is, Dave. Hey, man, you're on the air. Do I get a chance to say hold by old oh, friend Dave? Jesus out Christ. With I, Dave, I can't get rid of I this know. guy. Yeah, Dave. It's been ages. That How are you? Been? Miserable in yourself? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. You're, you're miserable? Of course I am, Dave. We had a lot of great times together. I had no. I, what was I that? What was that? We got to hang out. You, you know, I, I should tell. I was playing. I haven't been doing it recently, but we're going to start in the spring. I was playing once a month at a, at a club in, in Manhattan. And um, next time I'm there, I'll have to. Let, I'll let you know. We can have a drink together. But what was that cool little place that we used to meet and? And have like six or twelve Gallag Irish coffee together. Gallagher, Gallagher, not a drink, Dave. You would just at least ten drinks within an hour and a half, and three bowls of potato chips. <laughs> what was this? I knew we, we went to that cathedral and we got kicked out. Like that? What was that Saint place Pat where we? Saint Patrick's, Saint Patrick's <laughs> Cathedral. We were kicked out for wearing hats and talking on cell phones. Oh my God! What were we thinking? But those were the days. That's a, that's that's, that's, that's actually a very a very interesting story and a funny story that most of the the new listeners have no idea about. Dave, why don't you tell that story? I I don't know how we wound up there. Was it was it around Christmas time or something? We were drinking at the, at the bar that we were drinking, and then we went over to the cathedral. I, I and we were like inside, and I don't know if I like an idiot answered my cell phone or was sending a text message, and then we were like asked to leave. <laughs> I felt like I felt like a fool, but it was always fun hanging out so with both, you. Both, so you funny? and Joe got kicked out of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Joe was usually kicked out of bars. And I know that he was kicked yeah, out I of think... Steve Grill's um, uh, pizza place. Oh man! Back in the day. But Joe, you're, you're still miserable after all these years. You haven't found any. He hung up. He's gonna, he'll, he'll call back. Dude, Joe is. He's, he, he, dude, he's more miserable than ever. So, were you around when oh, Joe first started talking about the fact that he likes chicks with cranks? Oh man, I think I missed that. Wow, you I, missed wow, that. Really? I, that might have been right at the end. So Joe, now yeah. Joe, Joe, and don't 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 tell anybody I said this, but Joe thinks he's a transsexual. Oh man, Are you, really? Yeah, and he talks about he he's in love with chicks with cranks. That's what he that's what he digs, and oh, apparently wow. Phyllis knows about it. His daughter listens to the show. Wow, how's how's Vincent? By the way, Vince, Vince, Vincent is that his name? Yeah, I think Vincent's lost his mind too. Let's see if this is Joe. Joe, what happened? Joe, what happened? Right, I clear up. I'm on. I'm, I'm on a cell phone. Yeah, please. I don't know. I have to get off, but please email Dave my phone number. So I will not. When he comes to New York, you can. I can't. Oh, Joe, do you want his number, Dave? <laughs> you sure? Yeah, yeah I'll definitely. So you now you committed. Me. Now you committed, and now now that you know that he likes chicks with cranks, you're okay with that. 
Yeah, I think I'm okay. <laughs> well, I'm okay with that for Stretch, him. You know, <laughs> tell me a bad I've been discussed that on the show. I've met Dave like five times. You know that. Yeah, but he didn't. You didn't. He, Dave had no idea. Dave left the show before you started yeah, to talk I, about that. Yeah, I don't think but, I had really. Yeah, I don't. Is it was it a more of a recent phenomenon, Joe, or was it something that you were into all along? Or no, it was something that was. Well, I can't stretch to something to specify what it is, but it's a uh, criteria. I was into all along, but I just started discussing it over the past couple of years on Spencer's new um, website. I, I Spencer's new internet show, right, Spencer? Am I correct on that? That's right. He he didn't he didn't talk about it when we were on the radio, but now he's very free okay. with the fact that he's a transsexual, and but he actually he hasn't actually gone through the process. But in his mind, he's a, he's a woman. He's a he's a man trapped in a woman's body. Uh, he's a he's a woman uh, trapped in a man's body. Like really. Uh, Really? Wow. <laughs> I, I have no yeah, response to that. I mean, how are you going to respond to that? I know. I mean, I, I'm not not being a hater. I'm not judging it. I mean, I I know I have some definitely some kind of a uh, out there kind of uh, sexual like tastes and like uh, what, what would you call it? But proclivities. I mean, yeah, exactly. That well, was you this. Do you, do, you have a, do you have a girlfriend now? Okay, you very quickly before I have to get off. Do you have a girlfriend now? Uh, not in the traditional sense, no. So you're saying, what are you saying, hookers? Well, you know, I was like, I was doing a little bit of that. I was like, you know, I, I've actually reflected on this. I mean, seriously, I've really reflected on this a lot in the last few months. Like why I was like, my thing was pursuing, uh, you know, I had like dominatrixes and I was into those kind of relationships and they weren't even always like sexual, but that I, I kind of got like excitement from pursuing that kind of a thing. But, you know, recently I've thought about that and just like, you know, I spent years sort of pursuing that kind of a thing and at the expense of having like real relationships. And I feel like, I don't know, it's kind of strange. But in the past four years, I mean, I kind of had a few little things. I haven't had, you know, like... Dude, bo both of you guys, your wires were crossed somewhere. That's all I'm saying. I'm yeah, not no, judging. So, yeah. I'm not judging, but at some point your wires were crossed. And I, I can't explain why you... You know, you, you're in a situation. You're in Dave, and I can't explain Joe. I mean, no one can explain Joe. But well, the Dave, fact that uh, Joe, I mean, Joe, Joe was calling the show for so many years, and and, we've, and it took him ten years or more to admit that basically this is his situation. Now, uh, Joe, let me ask you: was, was that some? Of, we weren't fact that you were, but he told me not to discuss this. I we're going to discuss it now because because Dave Salazzo is calling in. I mean, you give me I, some I have, orders, you, you producers, not to discuss this on the show anymore, am I correct? You can talk about it now, dude. I just have a quick question. Was, Joe, was that sort of like the source of, like the root of your, or partially the, like the root of the depression for all those years, in addition to the hair loss? No, the that you were, my, depression, my depression comes from, from hair loss, Dave. Okay. You know, I, and I, I diagnosed you as having body dysmorphic disorder because you're a very tall, good-looking guy. You're over six six feet. You're very good looking, and you have a you have some type of psychiatric disorder, Dave. But I do like you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. At least he likes you. At least he likes you, Joe. Hold on for a second, all right? Hold on, Joe. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Um, I'm sorry. Am I on the air? You are on the air. Don't be sorry. Oh man, I'm, I, the reason I'm sorry is I didn't know if the chat room got closed. Is it closed? Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't control the chat room. The chat room belongs to the GFQ network. It belongs to Andrew Zarian, correct? That's correct. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I just want to say, uh, you know, finasteride and Avidar, it's a very good thing, and um, don't listen to the, all the hypocrisy and, um, well, you know, a lot of the scare tactics that these uh, ambulance chaser lawyers use. Uh, like you know, scare you out of propecian finasteride, but um, <clears throat> yeah, just I, I wasn't sure if like the chat room was closed or not, if, like or I just got banned or something. It's possible. I mean, you know, they they kick people left and right, so I don't know if it's possible. I guess I don't think it's closed though. Let me see. I mean, it looks open to me. I have no idea though. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not part of the chat room, so I don't know. I haven't tried to type in there, so. All right, dude. Listen, I, pre oh, I, 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 always, I always appreciate the call. Yes, sir. All right. You take care, all right? Okay, bye. All right, thanks. 
That's so wild of it. Joe's 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 not on the line anymore, is he? Yeah, he's still on hold. It is it is fucking oh, okay. it, it is wild. Let me yeah, see. I mean that's that's really interesting. I mean, well, well that's just it is it is interesting, but it's gotten to the point where it's getting really boring. But it's new to you. No, it's not to it's me. New, I, mean, I didn't even know. I had no idea. It's new to you. So that's why I wanted, I wanted to bring it up. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Spencer, you've got to get a Hollywood writer. This is priceless. <laughs> What's that? Johnny Ohio. Now, now there's another guy. Dave Salazzo has no idea who the fuck Johnny Ohio is because Johnny didn't start calling until we got online. So, Hi, Dave. How you Ohio? doing? I heard a lot about you. Oh, thank you. How are you? Oh, doing great. Uh... This is, uh, you know, Spencer really needs to get a Hollywood script writer, and this could be like a, a sitcom. I mean, yeah, the, I mean, the, it could be a reality show works. for sure. Oh, oh my God, Spencer, there's nothing here. There's no no amount of hair gonna fix the problems these guys have. <laughs> And I thought I was fucked up. <laughs> this that, is great shit, man. That is true, man. That is true. We said that about Dave for years, and now, but Joe, but Joe apparently is worse than Dave. Well, you know, these two guys. Well, it, Dave, it would be cool if they lived in like in some sort of like. Uh, we're gonna get them like a mansion, man. We're gonna do a reality show. We're gonna get Dave Salazzo and Joe in a mansion with like Bald Jerry and a couple of other guys. I, I'm telling you, Spencer, you would you, you'd give up the the hair loss gig. You would never you would never have you in common law would never have to see uh, you'd never have to work again. <laughs> you know, you you could build your your studio. Could, you could just build a freezer in there. You wouldn't have to even worry about it getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is good stuff. Well, I'm glad really I'm is. glad you're enjoying it, man. I'm glad you're enjoying yeah, it. We haven't yeah. spoken to Dave in a long time, and and you know what, Dave, I missed you, man. I really do. I, 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 and I, you. I mean, I don't care what anybody says about you. Oh, I'm Dave, just kidding. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you, you did put Howard on the spot. You really did. I mean, you had him that, stammering. That tried, uh, you know? He was very defensive. Anytime anyone gets defensive, there's something there. And I thought you did a great yeah, job. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it was kind of uh, rough. Like, I mean, they were all just sort of ganging up on me, but, you know. Well, that's what they do. Yeah, like, They're like, they have that pack mentality. And uh, yeah. that's exactly what they do. You know, they're going to protect their leader. And uh, you went after him. And then when Dr. Bauman uh, last week, I mean, he really went for the jugular. And uh, Howard, you know, he, he kept backpedaling and uh, thought he did a good job. Oh, he did a great job. Let me see if I can find, let me see if I can find these clips. Yeah, what was the gist of that? Because I didn't hear that. I'm going to see if I can find him. Um, that was great. Hold on. Let me see what I got here. I'm going to have to plug in my computer and see if I can make this work. Yeah, I, it's funny. I don't understand what the big deal with Stern is. Didn't he admit to having some plastic surgery like years ago? I mean, what, I mean, so yeah. he's wearing a, a little hair. Or there's, you know, he's got like a little system or something. What's the big deal? Why wouldn't you talk about it? I, I don't understand. His persona. The hair is his persona. Yeah. And the, sun, and the uh, dark glasses. <laughs> that's what he hides behind. Who knows? Let's see. Let's see if this, uh, if this plays. I don't know. I hope genetically in the future. But the guy is great. Get rid of all hair? Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, useless. Yeah, sure, of course. Really? Uh, except the hair on your head? Hair. Except the hair on your head. You got to keep that. That's like key. No doubt about that, Howard. Well, now, what about that hair on your head? What about it? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's been amazingly thick and full. What's the, what's your secret? Can, can you guys hear this? My, grandfa my no. grandfather, uh, my grandpa Sal, had uh, full... Like black hair, you used to slick it back to. So you guys aren't hearing this. Hold on, you guys aren't you guys aren't hearing that? No, nope. Really? Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Let's see. Let's see why. Can Hold I... on. Let me see if I hear it through my headset. That's interesting. The guys in the chat room, are you able to hear that? No, I'm not hearing it in my headset. Well, either. it's not playing right now. Let's see if you can hear it, hear it now. Let's see. It was and I look just like him. And, nope. and he he had full jet black hair till he was in his eighties, and then when he got like not at very, all, Spencer. it's very possible that I'm not plugged in. I have to try it, try it again. But anyway, um, it was pretty. It yeah. was it was it was pretty interesting to hear the way that Bauman had him uh, kind of backed against the ropes. And we got a lot of commentary. A lot, I mean, I'm talking hundreds of people contacted us in the last week about this. It's all over Twitter. It was pretty pretty interesting. Well, what did Bauman ask him? What, what was he saying? He basically said, well, so what's up with your hair, dude? 
You know, I mean, there's a lot of questions about your hair. He's like, well, what, I mean, who's asking questions? He's like, well, everybody. And well, what are they asking? Well, they want, you know, I mean, you have jet black hair. It's, it's very thick, you know, man your age. Uh, they want to know if it's real. And then he kind of went into this thing where he was like, well, you know, uh, I mean, he just kind of, was, he just seemed like he was back on his heels and he wasn't even defensive. He just, he didn't know how to react because he was talking to a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a well-respected doctor. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, and he, was very, he was very—he was very. Uh, it was sort of like he got hit with a with a punch right out of left field. <laughs> it was pretty wild, actually. Pretty wild. I wonder why you can't. I can't get you guys to hear that. That's so weird. I mean, I'll figure it out. Where's Andrew when you need him? Whatever. He can't do it for. He can't. He can't help me from that end. Oh. But um. It's possible I'd have to reboot my computer or something like that. I, I noticed, I don't know how true, uh, if the, the guy was, this was the real Bob man from uh, Hassan Was he in the room? I saw Bob man in the room. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Andrew apparently is kicking everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> the tyrant he is. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. Let me see. Well, I'm going to let you go, Spencer. It was uh, nice talking to you, Dave. Uh, hope you are... Uh, same here. You'll frequent the show more. Hey, uh, great you know, talk. Spencer's really, really got something going here with uh, uh, GFQ. It, I tell you, he's really partnering partner himself up with uh, a class act. So, need to listen in some more. Well, listen, dude. I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate that. Work. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to play this. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Take so, it easy. See if you can listen. Right, so let's see if we can make this it. make this work now. Indy something. It turned gray. So Did you hear it now? And he had big, thick head of hair, and I. Right. I think I got lucky. That's my mom's dad. Yeah, I mean, dad. look how dark it is. It's amazing. But your dad had some hair loss, though, right? My dad's bald. As a, as a, I always just figured I'd be bald. Uh huh. But it has nothing to do with the dad. Suppose someone told me it's your mother's father. <laughs> well, it can come from both sides of the family. You know, I mean, it's right. not just the. Yeah, mom's your dad family. is in there too. I don't know, but I thank God for my hair, head of hair. I, it's just so great because I got such a fucked up face. You hear that, Dave? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, but, you know, it frames it, right? You always kind of wear it down, framing the face, hmm? So what are we going to do, put it up in a bun? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I know. I know how I wear my hair. Your, your hair is, you know, a cause for a lot of debate here, Howard. Where? Well, you know, there's some questions about, gosh, it's so thick and full. You know, how does he keep it that way? Well, what's the debate? Well, the debate is if it's real or not, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. People write me all the time and said, you must wear a wig. Oh, please. But, and, uh, and, you know, well, you can understand that, right? Because you have, like, a private hairstylist that travels with you, right? I mean, I don't have a... I mean, when we She's do America's Got private, Talent, yeah. it's not private. She works <laughs> She works for a lot of people. We see her all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's what they do in show business. They have a hair and makeup person that, that dolls you up. We all have it. The only person on America's Got Talent doesn't have a... He's got a makeup person, but he doesn't have his hair, is uh, Howie Mandel. Well, he doesn't have any hair to worry about except that little patch under his, uh, you know, under his lip there, right? Wait, you're... <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, Dr. Bob, let me get back on top. <laughs> he really, you really had him back on his heels, man. Yeah, he seemed like, yeah, he seemed a little unprepared. Like, you, he, 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 that's very unusual for Howard. Yeah. Yeah, there's got to be something going on there. And if there is, that's fine, you know I mean? Well, that's the thing. Why? Why can't like I, I? I talk about painting my head. You know, yeah, I, mean, I talk about gl I've glued hair on my head to try to see if I could wear hair instead of painting. I have done whatever it takes to try to make myself appear to have a full looking head of hair. Yeah, I don't know why there's this uh, in his mind. There, I mean, well, in many people's minds, there's this, this stigma about the hair thing. But I mean. I don't know. I, I mean, I never had that. I, I, for me, it was very like therapeutic to talk about it. You know, it, it, I I wanted to talk about it. I I almost wanted to be the first one to talk about it before other people. You know what I mean? Like before the people in my circle were talking about it, I wanted to initiate it. But I mean, well, it's cathartic, and it's also it's free. Yeah, it You're like is. like well, you know, people kind of will stop focusing on it, and who knows what the hell people say behind my back. Like when I meet people and I start talking, especially when they they first find out what I do, and then all of a sudden their their eyes drift up to my head. And then I kind of ex explain yeah. the situation, but you know what? Fuck them. I know, and they they never look until you tell them what you do, right? I that's mean, right. That's, well, I don't think they do, but I, that's when I notice it. But yeah, I mean, but whatever. You know, I I've there, I have been at, at parties or whatever when I've told women, grown women, and they're mortified 
when I tell them that I, 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 I will wear makeup to camouflage my, my thinning spot. And these are people that have three inches of makeup on their faces. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, it's just like anything else that you do to make yourself, you know, present yourself in a better light. But, dude, or they, they, they literally walk out of the house wearing masks. And yeah. I'm being judged because I put a little, you know, shoe polish on my head. Yeah, I don't know. Why is there that stigma? Is it because, in you know, in the past, you know, the, the hair, you know, before, you know, the modern, you know, times, you know, where hair transplants were so Spit bad. Out and wigs. <laughs> 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 I haven't done this in years. <laughs> you know, wigs were, you know, systems and stuff were so bad. I think maybe that's, like, what causes the stigma. So people think that, does that make any sense? You know what I mean? Like, in the past, the options for you know, camouflaging it were so bad that maybe that... Oh, well, yeah, that. of course. I mean, people are freaked out. Like when a guy like Joe Tillman comes out and says that he had a hair transplant, if people were to meet him in person, they would have no clue. Yeah. Because they're, they're looking for cornrows. You know, they're looking for, you know, the really obvious plugs. And they yeah, still... Yeah, so the remember the guy who worked with us used to say plugs, you know, got plugs. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's long gone. You haven't heard from him. I, that guy was evil. I won't even mention his name. Yeah, please don't. Please don't. That was one of the sickest. I mean, I've worked with some, in playing in bands, too, you work with some really sick individuals. But yeah. that guy, like one of the sickest dudes. I would say he was I mean, He was absolutely one of the sickest, one of the most evil guys. Yeah. And I was so really. kind to this guy. I know, it's almost like, you know, the, the nicer you are to people like that, the more they just, you know, the more vicious they become, or the more, it's just, it's just insane, man. Let me tell you, it was a le that was a tremendous lesson learned. It was a life, it was a very important yeah. life lesson for me. And, yeah. you know, I am so happy that I can now be completely self-contained. And I can run this operation from anywhere, actually, but I mean... You know, if I obviously I have to move my studio, but I can do it myself. I don't need anybody to record. I don't need anybody to to you know to 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 run my board or answer my phones or to broadcast. I don't need to go on the radio and use you know uh, uh, somebody's uh, uh, transmitter. All I have to do no, is it's, plug it's great, in, great. and I'm out there to the world. I know that's great. I mean. And I don't have to the depend only, on these the morons to produce the show and to run the board. I used to think it was like black magic running one of these boards because it seems so complicated. <laughs> you know, these guys make it like it's such a difficult thing. Yeah. I mean, the guys that are running boards, I, I hate to say it, but yeah, I mean, a monkey with symbols can run one of these things. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the crew that I met in New York, who was that guy? He was really cool. It was his name like... Uh, when I first met you, the guy, oh, uh, was not, not Pete, the, the other Yeah, guy. I forget his name. He was a really good guy. Like I mean, Rudy or something? It was Rudy. That's right. Rudy, W-N-E-W -E in New York. That, that was, guy was cool. That, that was a great was station to work with. And um, I really enjoyed it. They treated me with a tremendous amount of respect. Actually, out of all the stations that I ever, actually ever sat in and did the show out of, that station treated the show with the most respect. Yeah, that was, that was a great studio. Do you remember the... Guys who had the scooter, oh, didn't those those two guys that did that radio show? They had like a scooter, and then there was a couch. That used Dude, to call Opie and couch Anthony. That. They called it the lesbian couch. Yeah, was that was that for that real, or was that, I remember sitting on that couch when I, you know, I didn't know any better. Yeah, yeah. Now that was the Opie <laughs> and Anthony show. We did we did the show out of their studio. I actually sat in Anthony's chair, and um, it was. I mean, there was the place was full of porn. It was great. We go there yeah, on a Sunday and had the run of the building. Yeah, it was, those are the days. And then that cool little diner was like, what was that place called? The Brooklyn Diner. Yeah, like, you know, they had great milkshakes. And, and like, in the days after 9-11, when we really got to know each other, we were going out and and having drinks. And that yeah. was actually really fun. Yeah. Well, you fucked it all up, dude. <laughs> Let's take another call. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hey, Spencer. This is TJ. How are you? Oh, my God. TJ. I remember TJ. Hey, Dave. How are you guys, man? It's a long time. You remember Dave? You, I know. You, you know TJ? Oh, that's right. TJ came yeah, into course. the studio. Yeah, of course. Holy shit, TJ. Uh, yeah, I remember Dave very well. Uh, uh, when I first started listening to your show in 2008, uh, Dave, was, uh, Dave was on every, every Sunday wow. at that time. Right. Wow. So what's happening, man? Well, you, How's life? You, man, got, you, you got some chick now, right? Are you still with her? I got, I, I, I've got a chick, yeah. 
Dude, I, uh, we've awesome. been dating for uh, since June of last year, so whatever that is, eight nine months. That is amazing. Cool. That is, so, I'm so right. happy for you, dude. It's not that amazing. It's not amazing that you got a chick. I'm amazed. It's just amazing that you know you're you're happy finally. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, it is. It's more like a miracle for me. You know? <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was not easy. I met with a. Uh, I'll just briefly. I met with a second matchmaker. I think the last time I talked to you it was a while ago. Yeah. I had told you about a matchmaker, and she uh, she just basically said, "Look, there's nothing I can do for you." And she pointed it at height. The second one, I decided to try a second one. She was uh, very honest, very empathetic up front. And uh, she just said, look, I'll, I'll see if I can help you. And, and uh, a couple weeks later, she called me back and she had a, a perspective match. And we met and we've, we've been getting along ever since. So, I mean, so tell me, uh, first of all, how tall is your, is your uh, girlfriend? Taller than me. She, she is 5'4". Uh, okay. So just for anyone who doesn't know TJ, TJ, besides being a hair loss sufferer, going through a couple of hair transplants, actually three now, right? Yeah. How's the hair, by the way? Dude, the hair is good. I, I'm, I'm pretty content. Crown issues, but hair, other than that, hair is good. Okay, so you are a balding guy who's five foot one. Yeah. Okay, and you, know, you have all these guys that are crying because they're losing a little hair. And they're saying that they're never going to get a woman. And you're dealing, you're contending with some serious issues as far as, I mean, you're a good looking guy. You're smart. You're, you know, well healed, uh, extremely well educated and have a great career. You're an engineer. But that 5-1 yeah. thing really, really screwed you up. Big time. Big time. You know, I And your woman, years. and this is not a joke. I saw pictures of your woman on Facebook and she's hot. She's a good looking girl. Nice. And, uh. Uh, my, my, she, what, I'm sorry. Did you say what race? No, I didn't say what race. Oh, I said nice. Oh, oh, nice. I thought Dave said what race. I'm. 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 I'm so, I, 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 she looked Caucasian to me. She. She I, is I, uh, I, from Russia. Right, dude. Oh wow, that's, that's awesome. Now I told you about yeah, the Russian chicks looks, years ago, and you just you were like, nah, forget about it. Oh my so what, god! It's not, not like I. It's not like I chicks. mail ordered her though, but it was. Uh, it's funny because when I first learned about her, I yeah, I but you you, not, you could I, have mail not. ordered her though. That's the thing. You didn't mail her this one, but you could have done it years ago. I, 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 I it was. I guess it was a possibility, but I was never interested in being someone's ticket to the country. Right. She was already a citizen, so I was like, all right, that that works. That's great, man. So I mean, so okay, so you got you guys met. She was cool. I mean, your matchmaker said, "Listen, this dude's five foot one." Yeah. And, and he, you know, and and she was just like, whatever. She does not give a shit. I mean, at all. I, it, it, that's why I'm saying it's a miracle. I've never, uh, you, you know, it's, I'm 40. This is the second time in my life I've ever met someone who I can have a relationship with right. that doesn't care about height. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, so she does not care at all. Dude, and this, this, you're talk, you're, this is a good person, dude. This is a real, you, yeah. this is a gem. Because she, she's solid. She's yeah, really good. She, that's good. I remember. Oh, yeah. I'm really happy for you. Yeah. So I mean, what? So what's? No, I, so you've been together for a long time. Are you guys thinking about getting married? What's What's going on? You know, I um, uh, nine months. Uh, you know, I I don't know yet. I'll be yeah. honest. I don't know. You know, I I I'm, we. It what's up? You're not that into her. What's going on? <laughs> I'm into her. I'm into her. But you know, I, I the other part part of me wants to just stay uh, uh, like we are right now. So I don't know. You know, it's it's kind of easy right now. Marriage introduces complications, I think. <laughs> I agree. And how old is she? Thirty. She's going to be thirty-nine. She's uh, just slightly younger than me. Okay, so you're going out with a younger chick, who's taller <laughs> than you. Yeah. And you know, you're a hair loss sufferer. So, so for all you mother efforts who think that there's no hope for you because you have a bald spot or receding hairline or you know you need a hair transplant, you know, I think that TJ is an incredible example of perseverance. And not giving up hope. Because you used to call the show saying that there's no hope. And you always had a good attitude about it, but you were like, there's no hope. I'm never going to get a girlfriend. very upbeat, if I remember correctly. Yeah, very upbeat. I uh, appreciate that, yeah. I had uh, I basically, at the time, I resigned to what I thought was my fate. Uh, but, but I guess uh, part of me just wasn't ready to completely give up yet. I threw in a few more uh, fish hooks in the water and... Boom! Something hit. That, and, that's that, and that is a lesson in life, my friends. You yeah. know, there's, I mean, and, and uh, so there's hope for you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I feel hopeful, you know. 
I don't have a girlfriend by choice. By choice. But it's by choice for you. Yeah. 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 There, no, I mean, there's I, I, definitely. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say there, there's, there's definitely a, a, a beauty of being single too. I mean, the bachelor life's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, the bachelor I life, like is, life is good, but you still want to have sex and intimacy. Yeah. And right. now, yes, you can pay for that, and but that could be <laughs> that could that could be a lonely thing as well. Yeah, it's never the same. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, at the, at the times when I get close to being in a relationship, like there was a girl that I was kind of hanging with, and we're still friends. You know, but it was it was more like intense, maybe like a year, year and a half ago, and it got to that point where you know it had to turn into something more than just a friendship. And I just wasn't feeling it. It wasn't like, you know, I just wasn't, you know, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it. You know, you ever hear from I, that I, chick, I, Amy? You know, Amy, I haven't heard from her in years. Wow. Well, which Amy? California, Amy? California, Amy. Yeah. We've talked a little bit. Really? Not, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a more friend. We talk a little bit on Facebook. I might've talked to her on the phone. Once or twice in the last two or three years. So you call Amy, you talk to her on the phone, but you don't call me. I think she called me. <laughs> can't I, I call can't you, I text you. I can't believe that, man. <laughs> See how I am? My father had to die before you communicated with me. Ah, it's not like that. So TJ, man, I mean, so I, I'm, really, I, I'm really glad that you called in. I mean, you haven't been partaking, you haven't been part of the show in, in, in a long time. So what have you, you been doing? Yet. Well, you know, life is almost the same, you know, other than a girlfriend, new job about what I started that last September. Um, I'm doing a lot of, spending a lot of time on the freeway now getting to and from work. But, you know, other than the girlfriend, new job, life is just moving along just like anyone else. How's your, uh, how's your sister cool. doing? Oh, she's good. She's did, she, good. Did, did she marry that guy? She did. Uh, she married a, a guy who was a former. <laughs> Dude, not only that, she's pregnant. Oh, my God, really? Wow. Who's yeah, the father? Be an uncle, soon enough. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Uh, yeah, so I'll be an uncle soon enough. So, um, wow. Uh, that's kind of what's going on. But uh, yeah, I, the other thing I just wanted to mention to you is I, I had a chance to listen to the uh, the show, not live, but the show with Dr. Bauman and uh, and uh, Howard Stern and, and what have you. And I just want to throw in my two cents and yeah. and say, uh, you, you know, hey, if, if in my opinion, if you took the evidence that's available and gave it to a jury, that jury would come back and say he's got he's he's wearing hair or or, or had a hair transplant or something like that. Well, l listen, I you know I'm not even going to say it. I don't need to say it. I don't really give a shit. But apparently, so many people are are interested in Howard Stern's hair. It's amazing because all we did was do that show last week, and it's been I mean, social media has blown up, and the amount of yeah. emails that that I've received. It's like, okay, guys, you know, I get it. You know, everyone wants to feel that, you know, if they're losing their hair, they want all the celebrities to be dealing with hair loss as well. Yeah, that's how I felt, kind of. Yeah, but I, I never, I, I always just like, I never wanted to out a celebrity. And that's what pissed me off no, about, I didn't either. that's what I, I pissed me either. off about the whole Howard thing, because he made it as though we were trying to out him. And I didn't give a fuck about his hair loss. Yeah, no, I know. Absolutely. It's, Alleged it's, hair it's loss. The other thing. And the other thing, too, uh, Spencer, I had heard uh, in the past when I listened to your show, you talk about the $50,000 bet and when Dave called him and, and what have you. But yeah. this was the first time I actually heard the clip. And it seemed to me, and, I, you know, maybe this is out of context, but it seemed to me that Howard was unusually defensive. I mean, I, he even called and, and yeah. it seemed out of, it, it's, he called uh, uh, Dave a douchebag even I yeah. mean, during that uh, time. And I thought, oh, that was, you know, that's kind of not cool. Dave, Dave just fact-finding he's not calling names or anything and they were just all over dave yeah well i mean, listen that's that that's 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 their shtick though that's their shtick and yeah, yeah he, he does seem defensive whatever it is it just none of it mattered and that's what was so funny about it. and when i accepted that bet i didn't i didn't think it wasn't because i thought i was going to win it's because i thought yeah. you know what you can't fifty thousand dollars worth of publicity it was well worth it to me yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. and and if it what if we were allowed to come in there and it wasn't his hair, holy shit! Do you know how much press we would have gotten? Oh, incredible! And the other thing too, uh, uh, boy, Chance uh, had such a great point. He said if somebody was really had a full head of hair and was challenged on it, it'd be so easy to dispel it by just saying, "Here, you know, come run." 
you know, expose it. Come on your fingers through it. And it would be very, very easy for uh, Howard to dispel it. But sure. at least in the public eye, it seems like he hasn't done so. Well, listen, you know, he, he's, deal, he's, got a, he's got a great life, married yeah. to a beautiful woman. He's, he's worth yeah. half a billion dollars. You know, yeah. I mean, let him live his life and enjoy it. And uh, I just, you know, it was something that, you know, uh, Dr. B was on the show. He thought he, it would be a good idea to talk about it on our broadcast. But frankly, I can give two shits if Howard Stern is losing his hair. <laughs> so, totally agree with T you, man. Totally agree. TJ, man, it's, it's really, I'm really glad you called in. And you know what? Yeah, great, C great. Call in more often, dude. You bet, you bet, man. I'm always uh, uh, stuck on the freeway uh, during your show, but I got a little lucky tonight. But yes, I will. Well, it's you can, li you can to listen to us on Stitcher Radio. You can also listen to us. Just plug in your iPhone to your, to your Bluetooth. Yeah, and, I do. I do. Yeah, and just and just call in. Call from the car. Yeah. All right, dude. You got it, man. All right, we'll, take care. We'll do great time. All right, you too. Fucking guys, yeah, five, five one. He's getting laid, and these guys can't come. These guys are complaining. Yeah. And this woman, he, he I mean, he's awesome. got a really good looking woman. Now he's a good looking kid, you know. So, but his his biggest issue is that he's five foot one, and he's balding. Yeah, that's got to be kind of tough. So, I mean, come on, all you guys are complaining out there. Honestly, first of all, he's the coolest guy in the world. So, I mean, that yeah. that shined through for sure. And this woman must be incredible, too. So, I'm, I'm really happy for him. Let's see who this is. Yeah, yeah I remember that, him from the old days. You know? TJ from the old days. What's up, man? You're on the air. Hey, Tanger. Are you drunk? A little. All right. Andrew Zarian from the guys from Queens. This is Dave Salazzo, former hey. sidekick. From the Ball Truth. Dave, hey, what's hi. going on? How are you? Nice, nice to meet you. But you know what's interesting? You brought up Howard and you brought up Chauncey. If he was confident about his hair, why wouldn't he prove that it's not real? That it is real. You know, it would be the easiest thing in the world. You know, it'd be it'd be really funny too. It'd be cool. It literally would take him three seconds to be like, "You guys are insane. This is my real hair," and and prove it. I mean, he he could even do it on uh, what show is he on? What show is that now? It's on TV. On Letterman. No, he's on a he's Howard, on a, he's on he's, oh, he's on a singing no, show or whatever. Yeah, America's Howard Got TV? Talent. He's on America's oh, Got yeah. Talent now. Yeah, but you know what though? I mean, think about the ads he could generate with hair loss companies, right? Like, let's say he makes it into a bit and says, "Okay, is Howard's hair real?" Sponsored by whatever. Yeah, it's brilliant. He actually. can make a killing. He's making thirty grand a live read. at that time. He was making thirty thousand dollars for a thirty-second live read. Right? Could you imagine how much money he could make for a thirty-minute segment or a one-hour segment? That's actually a real. You in the studio. Actually, a really great you point. In the studio, and you bring in a doctor, one of your doctors in there. He brings in maybe two or three sponsors. He could do the feral bullshit live read. He could do uh, a histig, you know. No, but that guy, the, 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 that, that, the, the hair system guy couldn't afford what this guy would be able to charge. Yeah, I mean. He, he should basically bring, he could bring in the big, him. the big boys, bring in Bosley, bring in all the big boys and, and not 30,000. He could charge $150,000 for this. Really I mean, do a tr really do an event, you know the unveiling, that. the unveiling of Howard's, you know, hair. If you think about it, he could have made, uh, God, thirty thousand dollars a segment, a thirty second library. He could have probably made a half a million dollars for that, for that, for the channel, right. or for you know K Rock, right, for that one hour segment. Why wouldn't he do it? I don't know, Dave. You were the one who was calling them for a month. What do you think? You know, I, I think that I think it's he's got something going on with it. You know, I mean, if that were my hair and it were real, I would love to. It would be funny. It would be a fun thing to have, like, some, you know what I mean? Make it this thing where someone comes in and they, they inspect it or whatever. I'd be proud of it, you know. If, you know, if I wasn't, I mean, if I was losing it, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. I'd talk about it, too. But the fact that he dodged us, I think, I, you know, I think he's got something going on. Well, I, I can tell you this. I that that situation is over. I don't need the press, and I did. I I, I accepted yeah. the bet many years ago because I thought it was a great opportunity. But the truth of the matter I was is, so excited. go ahead. I don't mean to cut you. I was so excited too when we were. I was like, "This is going to be awesome," you know. And then it just he just shut us because down, you, you you know? believed he was going to take it, right? You were like, "This is great." I, I thought I thought he would. Yeah. 
He threw down the gauntlet. Great. He's the one who said, I think it was actually Artie, he said 50 grand. Yeah, it would have been great, too. It would have, like, it would have helped. I mean, it sounds like, you know, corny, would have, but it would have helped people, too. It would have really, really raised a lot of awareness. It would have been huge. And, and, and that's why I was willing, been, yeah, that's why I was willing to, I was willing to give it to yeah. charity if we did win. I didn't even want the money. It's not about how much money you're, you're, you're generating for the, for the charity. It's about how much money you're generating for the station. And he would have made a, a good, I mean, uh, at least $200,000 for that station. Well, yeah. I mean, as far as he business is concerned, for sure. But for uh, on our end, it was about publicity and, and potentially generating money for a charity. And that's but, why. I mean, I, but here's the thing, Spence. I mean, he makes you look like an idiot if his hair is real, right? Sure. Well. So why wouldn't he do it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I refuse. I refuse to say why. I, f I refuse to speculate. Yeah. I mean, that's just there had to have been something going on. That's what I think. I mean, it's just you know, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Well, Cha I Chauncey Hayden. I mean, it was like Chauncey Hayden was very adamant about it on last week's show. Yeah. And he said that in his opinion. I don't even think he said it in his opinion. I think he actually said. Correct me if I'm wrong. That Howard's wearing a piece. Well, yeah, he, he alluded to it. I mean, allegedly he is, but right. I mean, Cha but Chauncey, I mean, you have to look at it to to kind of play in the middle. He he was burned by you know a bad hair transplant from somebody that you know, right? That was recommended by uh, by Howard. That was recommended by Howard. I mean, he, he literally his back of his head looks like it was he was in a car wreck. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Oh great. man! And so was Grillo. I mean, Grillo is the same situation. Same guy. Uh, you know, a bunch of sanitation workers worked on him allegedly, and, right. and his head is destroyed. How was he doing, by the way? Was he running like a pizza shop or something when he used to call in when I was for for, the show? for a short period of time? I don't know what's going on with him now, man. I mean, I know that he, he Grillo was like managing a pizza shop. Yeah, and then Didn't and that, something and, weird happened, like with Joe, like Joe from Staten Island went to the pizza shop, and like some weird thing happened, and he had a bad experience. Like actually, uh. He got, Hold on, Joe's uh, Joe's on the line. If I remember correctly, they didn't like each other or something, or Joe didn't like him. But Joe, so what happened? Joe, you there? Yes. All right, so why don't you tell the story? What happened with Grillo? Well, I wanted to Steve, you know, to see Steve Grillo, and um, you know, he, I told him what it was, and uh, he seemed like he really didn't care. He didn't, seemed like he didn't give a damn about you. He's very arrogant. Very kind of kind of setting. Joe, I'm not I'm not the biggest Grillo fan, but how medicated were you when you walked into that pizza parlor? Well, I was on my normal medication, probably four milligrams of Xanax. And did you Double bring your own beer into the place? Yes, of course. He did not sell beer. He said, "Go next door and buy it." I said, "Can I bring and it?" How in? Much, he said, "Yes." How much How much beer did did you bring in? I bring in, a, I think it was two bottles of Corona, and I ingested them along with a slice of pizza with hot peppers, which he charged me three fifty for. Well, according, listen, according to Gorilla, you were screaming sufferers and stuff like, you know, I mean, uh, you know, don't you care about the bald truth? And the guys, yeah, the guys trying to, you know, manage a business there. He's trying. To, listen, Joe, he's trying to make seven fifty an hour. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, you destroy. You're ruining it for him. <laughs> He's trying to pull the minimum wage, and you just scream and suffer. Well, he was a very unattractive, physically unattractive person, and he had a very, you know, he had the nerve to actually take my hat off, and I wouldn't do it, and he was like, oh, my God, God. insisted upon it. You know, it's, Dave, you know how I feel about that. Now, was oh, it yeah, was yeah, it, yeah, was I mean, it house rules, like, or, or, he just no, want, no. or he just wanted to see your head? He wanted to see my head. Yeah. That's crazy. And his head, I would rather not comment on his head. I mean, it was absolutely, I was absolutely horrified, to be honest with you. Listen, Joe, I, I mean, it, it, <laughs> I, I had a He's very a interesting boss. meeting with Grillo and the company that he works for, and, and I don't think neither one of you are stable people. Oh, my God. Well, well I am definitely unstable. That's a fact. Spencer knows that. I, I mean, yeah, he's as unstable as you are. I mean, that's... that's I, what, I mean, well, so what do you, what, so what was your experience with Grillo? Me? Yeah. Well, oh my God, he, he's insane. He pulled me into a meeting with the company that he works for and he made me sit there for like an hour and a half. He held me hostage. 
he held Ganji from Howard Hostage and Doug Goodstein from Howard Hostage. And he made me sit there and look at like 3D TVs and he kept screaming about how awesome it is. And the entire time he was, he thought it was a Howard Stern show. He was throwing M&Ms at them. He was throwing like Skittles at them uh, while, while his boss is trying to conduct like a professional meeting. It was the most insane thing I've ever been in. Yeah. And then he wanted, he wanted you to give him a show. Oh my, and yeah. And then he wanted a show and the concept of the show was that, he he hosts a party at the location that he's in, so like at the office that he works in, and he would run around with a dildo on his head, screaming whatever. That was the entire concept that he would walk, run around with a dildo glued to his head. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he, and he would interview people. He's caught in the in the in the in the whole you know the old Stern days. The fucking Howard vortex, man, and and, and then he was. And the funny thing, he's pitching me this entire thing, and he's standing in front of a TV while he's pitching it to me, and it's a Bosley commercial throughout the entire <laughs> thing, and I just start laughing hysterically. That's terrible, man. And he's like, what are you laughing at? And he looks back, he's like, are you, looking at, are you laughing about my hair loss? And I looked at him, I mean, just, just straight dead-eyed, and I go, yes, I am. I'm laughing at you about your hair loss, and I just walked out. Oh, you're a horrible person, dude. I mean, he's insane. The guy is <laughs> legitimately insane. His entire pitch for four hours was he would run around with a dildo on his head, talking, um, interviewing people at a party. Yeah, well, it was kind of like the uh, the crossing of streams when when Joe met Grillo. I think you know? Joe was a normal one in that meeting. You know, it's po I don't know. It's possible. We should have maybe I'll have Grillo on the show again to talk about it. But uh, it I was hate uh, Steve Grillo, man. You really, I, I took I took Grillo out to dinner. I took him at, at the Saffron's for dinner, and I couldn't stop staring at the awful scar in the back of his head. Yeah, well, he was, uh, he looked a hell of a lot worse before. I mean, you know, Bob Bruce, oh my Bob, Bob Bernstein really corrected his bad plugs. Yeah, I mean, he did a phenomenal job with it, but I mean, it was just, and, and all he could do was talk to me about about Joe from Staten Island the entire time, and he kept telling me how screwed up Joe Joe is. He was talking about me, Andrew. Uh, Joe, for like an hour, he was telling me how much he hates you. Jesus. What are you, some kind of weirdo faggot or something? All right, guys, guys, guys. It's 7.15. I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> Can I say one thing quick? The, the fact that Howard Stern is so defensive about his hair proves one thing to me. It's not real. He's giving himself out, away. That's that's one opinion. So, hello? I love doing that to no. Joe. He, th he thinks we hung up on him. All right, Joe, listen, no, man. I wanted to say was, he's giving himself away. He's being so defensive. Thanks for the extra time. And Dave, the best. Please give me a call when you're in New York. I love you, Andrew. See, Spencer, I still Thank have 30 you. minutes out of you tonight. Hey, you still got the I touch. Still <laughs> what? You still got the touch, dude. All right. Guys, I, lo I love you guys. I love you all. Thank all right. You so much. God Joe, bless you. Thank you. Bye, Joe. Thank you. Later, Joe. God bless you, Dave. Bye. Bye, Andrew. Bye, Spencer. Jesus. Bye, Joe. Oh, poor Joe. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew they didn't I knew something happened with him and, and Grillo or whatever. I, I, I remember that from I spent the, I, in the old day. Yeah. Honestly, man, for like an hour I had to hear about that that thing between Grillo and Joe. Yeah, well what else is he gonna talk to you about? I bought I, I bought him a freaking porterhouse for two. He sat there and he munched on it. Yeah. He died for two hours, seventy dollars seventy odd dollars a steak, not one thank you. Didn't even offer to put down any money. Oh, what was he going to do? I remember, Spencer, I remember yeah. the time you bought that guy two steaks. So the guy we were talking about. <laughs> remember that? Not only, I bought him, I bought him I two steaks. a porterhouse for two plus a lobster. Who, Joe? Or no, this, uh, this other guy used no, to work for the show. Yeah, this other guy. And it was just All like... All I could do was talk about Joe, man. Hey, hey Andrew, can I, get a, can I get a porterhouse with a potato? <laughs> <laughs> That that Joe from Staten Island is really weird. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, Andrew. I tell Spencer that I need some more hair, hairs on my head. I need some more transplants. I need I need some more transplants on my head. All right, guys, listen. I'm going to lose my mind. It's seven seventeen. I got to get out of here. Andrew Zarian, guys from Queens, thanks for calling in. I got to work tonight, man. Are you kidding? This is me? Awful. I got to work. I got a show at 1030. I got to produce. Oh, well, good luck. Well, so that means I got to get off the air now. All right. You got to get off the air now. You got 10 minutes. All right. I'll talk to you later. You got 10 minutes. <laughs> See you later. Dave, 
Salazzo, thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate it. It's great. Yeah, to- thank you. I'd love to call in again. Oh, you're not invited to call in again. It's a one-time deal. <laughs> I'm just going to do it anonymously. I'm yeah. This guy's my voice. I can do that. I know you can. I know you can. You and Joe. Yeah, I just want to ask you really quickly about a few of the other people. How's, how's Ben doing? Is it? I haven't heard. Ben's okay. I saw I saw Ben actually around. Actually, I hung out with Ben Christmas Eve. I was um, oh, wow. my dad nice. was in the hospital at the time, and I was walking. It was freezing, and I'm like, I had no intention of going out and getting loaded. And I I had the choice of walking into this pizza shop, and or not walking into this pizza shop. And I chose for whatever reason I was drawn to get a slice. And, and Ben was there. Ben was sitting there, Christmas Eve. All decked out in his like his leather, his chaps, whatever he's wearing, and and it was obviously great to see him. He's like, "I'm going out. You want to have a drink?" Next thing I know, you- it's four in the morning. You know, oh, uh, wow. there were no dry goods involved. Thank God. You know, I'm past that point. Did you hit the, you hit the green kitchen at all during your stay? We did. Uh, yeah, actually, I went to the green kitchen a couple of times. Dude, I was in New York for four months. Oh, is it that long? I didn't know it had been that long. Oh my God, it was insane. Wow, that has to have been, you must have lost your mind. Oh, my God. I, I, we'll talk. All right, listen, Dave Salazzo, okay. thank you so much, man. Uh, you thank know, you. Stay in touch, all right? I will, definitely. All right, take it easy. Guys, listen, I got to go. Guys from Queens has another live show coming up in about 10 minutes. Uh, I would plug the show if I knew what it was, but I know it's a good one. And I apologize. Uh, the web- the website, theballtruth.com, of course. Uh, check out archives of this very broadcast. You can uh, interact with other hair loss sufferers if you want to, and you can go to balltruthtalk.com, which is our online forum. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about hair loss, basic information about hair loss, go to americanhairloss.org. Uh, and let's see, what am I getting from Andrew Zarian here? bugging me. He wants me to pitch something. Let's see. Oh, name of the podcast. Podcast Without Pretense. It's actually a really good show. Check it out. It's on in about 10 minutes right here on uh, uh, GFQ. That's a GFQ Network or GFQLive.tv. Check it out. Uh, until next time, be strong, God bless, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that'd be splendid. Thank you. Good night.